we are going to start some we're going to start a stream we're going to start a stream we're going to ding deep do you guys remember what happened last yes excellent would you would you like to elucidate on that would you like to tell <laughs> everyone else what happened hey, let me get my uh, journal out because i want to actually remember the names of everything Slip Lana's journal in disguise so we have been enlisted by the free company of valat Instructor Jason has taken us towards Levis to deal with a goblin problem. Eliza, the priestess, who has worked there for 45 years, has told us to go and visit the farm. So we go to the Sedemir farm, and he's like, They've taken my son over that place with the strange moonlighty place. We walk to the woods and we meet a Elvrin in a fairy circle that basically seems to be protecting the boy so it doesn't seem to have anything connected to do with the weird starving goblin problem although it might have okay so all of you were sleeping at the sedimir farm household which presumably was a comfortable and enjoyable space i didn't love it it was a little weird because <laughs> like i knew who was in there with me and it made me uncomfortable but you know I mean, that's that's fair that's understandable it's kind of hard when you feel like there's like a bad guy like a wall away from you it makes my stomach feel it queasy Understandable. But I wasn't the one that was told to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making that decision just yet. <laughs> so you are woken up probably around 6, 7 a.m. Like first light kind of energy as the father of the household, Sedemir, tries to do so quietly, but nonetheless has to start his daily labors of dealing with the animals. And they only have a few animals here, but nonetheless, they have to be tended to every day and starting his daily farm work. There is a breakfast of a simple meat porridge that has meat, vegetables, and oats, and not much else. It is surprising that we get anything at all. I'm grateful. Suspicious about this meat porridge. I'm still thinking about Syrian talking about human food. <laughs> you, yeah, very, very. You definitely eat human food. You can. You, you're allowed to eat human food. It's. It's not a crime. Just suspicious of what this meat might be. <laughs> yeah, but I thought you bite that. <laughs> but I don't think the humans are preparing human meat. Yeah. Hopefully. It's just still in my mind. <laughs> Not cooking the boy just yet. Not yet, no. I'm trying to avoid eating boys. Because that's that's a crime. No. Uh, because, because it's a crime. It's it's a crime, Nick. It's, it's a crime. No. Yes. Yeah, yes, crime. Syrian <laughs> wants to eat all the Big crime. <laughs> no one knows. It is not a crime. Nope, still a crime. Still a crime. Yeah, no, you just won't get punished. There's a difference. It's still a crime. Definitely, definitely still a crime. <laughs> Nobody notices the crime. It still <laughs> happened. Oh. Is it a crime? Yeah. Also, I didn't sleep. I don't need sleep. I meditated. I'm a elf. Yes. Well, you know, for, I was I was just mentioning it for those who do sleep. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to separate myself from the crowd. Hey, Make having an elf is great. It means uh, we don't have to do watch. You know. Yeah. That's why I want to just sleep make, just make, outside, make, but make, make her hurt you. Then. <laughs> it's fine. I had a rough night. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you guys have woken up. There's a day ahead of you. You have options. You could murder the father while he's out on the farm and call it a farm accident. You could wait until Tahana rises with the children and. I need to know the other options. Thank. You. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, understood. I I would like to raise a slight concern, namely. How are they going to eat if we kill their dad? Because he he sucks, but like, it's yeah. I don't know the full situation yet. I'm just like, wondering if we'd be killing four people by killing one. And yeah. you know, we're trusting the judgment of an eight-year-old. Who's not wrong that his dad's a monster, if that's all true. But also, if you guys want to kill him, we got to come up with a plan for how they're going to like eat. Not mm. all kids actually, I don't know. Dad's a monster because he tells me rules. We don't actually know the full situation yet. He could be a real, real monster. Like, killing him might save the family. True. So I want to know. I think and that is wise. Also still don't know about the goblin tracks that we have found. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think that would be a good place to start our investigation today. If you mm. guys are okay. I think it's also an important thing to consider because, you know, it's been two weeks. I will mention this again. You know collectively that Elthrin are known to do some very strange things in pursuit of what they think is good and are often labeled as evil because of it. So they don't necessarily have the same moral judgment understanding as your average person. All right, Elthrin's a fae, isn't it? Yes, they're fae creatures. 
So that's why I'm kind of hesitant to be like, let's do that. We didn't promise anything, so we're okay. But like... Yeah. We also didn't promise a time schedule. So we may kill the father, just not yet. Exactly. Just not yet. Yeah. Let's go find out more about what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to figure out what's going on for the elves first. Uh, not elves. Uh, goblins. You know, I, I get those two mixed up. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you've got multiple potential problems to solve here. So, so last night we found some tracks. Yes. Yes. Um, they go out from the north end of farm. You're fairly certain you can follow them. You'd be able to follow them today. You don't necessarily know if that's going to be true in like a couple of days time. You do know at least start while they're before they can get washed away or anything. I was going to say you do note that the weather in the distance is looking it's looking a little bit rough. Would whoever headed out the door first today roll a perception check? Would make sense if it was me cuz I was completely reasonable to be up probably. Oof. Sadly, you don't notice anything of use. All right, so the next person out the door... Ro- no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you don't notice anything. So where are you heading out? Are you heading out to follow the tracks? I would suggest following the tracks. I would advise against talking to Jason, even though he might have advice. I think he wants us to solve this on our own. Be the respectful adults that he wants us to be. And I just get the impression that Jason is a drunk that abandoned us so that he could go to a tavern. Okay, okay, fair point, fair point, yeah, I hear you. Both of these are potentially valid interpretations. I mean, he's just human. It is true. It happens. <laughs> I want to argue. Suppose. <laughs> but I'm not. Uh, I'm sure, yeah, okay. I, will, I will just follow the tracks. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you guys, yes. you guys collect yourself together in the morning. You head out on through the north end of farm to follow the tracks. You notice that the strange light that you saw last night is not perceptible as you head past the tracks. But it is the middle of the day, and it was quite a dim light, so like you may just not be able to perceive it. There's too much sunlight around. You still sense like a nervous energy as you pass through the space, and you know you're not sure if that's because you know that there's an elf in there or because of some magical energies being imparted. Because I don't believe you currently have detect magic cast. I've heard of that. No, I don't think I have that. But I mean, it makes sense that we are feeling weird. We are walking on his body, basically, or what we think his body is. Exactly. Which you know, as long as you don't step in the fairy ring, isn't considered rude, or even make use of the the resources. And like, you know, if you needed to cut down the brambles for some purpose. That's nice. But, you know, the, like the, the fairy ring is like walking into its house kind of vibe. Mm. And you don't want to do that. No, not mm. without knocking. Exactly. Uh, the tracks are visible enough to follow them still. Yes, the tracks are visible enough. Could you roll me? I think it's survival to follow tracks nonetheless because this is going to determine how effective and quick you are. Because there's, you know, it's one thing to get through it, like, slowly, carefully, and I'm assuming you want to make sure you follow those tracks in good order. Cool, cool, okay, good. I'm good at this shit, by the way. Good, yeah, no, you're, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, honestly, you know, I was thinking that, like, maybe someone with a survival skill could have rolled that, but I don't know if anyone has that. I mean... Check? I don't think I have. No, I've, I've got, a. Uh... I'm not a wisdom boy. I'm not a wise boy. I'm a smart boy. Okay, good. Good. This is just like surviving in the wilderness. That is not this team's expertise. Wisdom, so... You got wisdom. Yeah. Oh yeah, then, then that's your job, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. That is just really a function of the role. I'll be honest, guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the difference between rolling a yeah. 1 and rolling an 18. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely not like skill oriented that's that's luck oriented but you know still it, it is a 21 you did initially roll a natural one though but i'm willing to let this slide just because you know it's, it's your first time kind of out you're, you're fumbling your way through about who should do which, which kind of work let's say i'm proficient at it that's why i thought yeah uh, I... yeah you are proficient so you get the plus two at the end there yeah it's it's just that you know you <laughs> you have no wisdom and and what, what? Why am I bothering with this? So one thing I'm gonna do before, I'll, or one thing I'll do to maybe help us with this is I'm going to snap and Baji or whatever we're gonna actually name him will appear and I'll let him go like fly ahead of us a little bit. Just, you know, bird's eye view. Make sure we don't get like ambushed or anything. Make sure these tracks go somewhere. Okay. Et cetera. Um, in that case, this is gonna be relevant. Survival people with their checks. Excellent, excellent. Um, I think 
I, I, that's going to be relevant in a bit. It's not going to be relevant just this moment, but it will be relevant in a bit. Yeah, that's fine. Not every, not every action I take will be relevant in the immediate. That's okay. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just letting you know that I recognize what you're trying to do here, but I'm navigating it forwards. So between Ash and Svetlana, you have a couple kind of arguments per se about, you know, wh what you should be doing. Like I'm imagining Svetlana's like, no, this, that's clearly the path. And Ash is like, no, no, we need to follow this like faint <laughs> track here. It's like, but there's a- I'm in this place. Yeah, but there's a much clearer one over here, you, you idiot. <laughs> Okay, but see, this this is clearly something supernatural over here. See, I, I'm sensing some magic. We can follow yeah, this. Trust. We've got the actual path, you know, the yeah. one with the blood. What do you mean and the actual path? Do you not believe in me? Steps. So I've seen the paths in my life. Okay, I'm sure yeah. this is the one. Yeah, it's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> we can go to the correct one. I mean. <laughs> I don't want to say you're wrong. So just to entertain your idea and figure out if you are wrong, we can follow your path. It's okay. You can't say I'm wrong because I'm correct. I mean, we, I am we'll saying see. that you're wrong. And that, that, that <laughs> is certainly true. How could this be? I'm supposed to be the smarter one here. So you push forwards on these tracks with an occasional argument and you will find yourself tr like you're following this path and you notice the, the clouds are rolling in and the drizzles happening. It's not like a full on rain, but there's there's definitely wetness hitting the ground and you find yourself pushing towards this kind of structured valley system of like rock cliffs and plateaus, almost like a, a mesa type area, which suggests that at some point in time, there was heavy water flow through here. That suggests you're getting closer maybe to some kind of mountainous terrain. The, there might have been like snowfall or glaciers or, or snow melt or something at some point. But nonetheless, you find yourself following this track and you get you get a little bit of nervousness as Elijah, your bird spots some movement very close to you down this path, uh, just to your northeast, in fact like in this direction. There is movement of small creatures on the ground. It doesn't want to get close to tip anything off. You can instruct it to do so, but this is the information you can get without like, without any rolls or any risk. Right. I'm going to relay this information to the group and suggest that something is up. Like we're walking through this valley and something's up on this wall. that's on our right hand side. Do you guys think it's so for to hug the wall? To clarify, because your bird can see from a bird's eye view, there is, you're in like one valley dairy area, mm -hmm. then there's like a plateau, and then there's another valley area, and the valley area on the opposite side of the plateau is where the movement is. Okay, so it's not like immediately northeast of us, but it is further north, it's further than that. Yeah, there is, there is a plateau between you, like... Yeah, I can kind of, I can, I'll, I can infer from here now. Thank you. Okay, well, I'll relay that to the group and suggest that maybe we move stealthily if we can. I don't think that's something we're good at, but it doesn't hurt us to try in this situation. Oh. You do kind of suck that at moving stealthily. Yeah, I think it's more about hiding positions and numbers than it is necessarily about yeah. surprising them. So I could do with getting in front of everybody, because I feel like if somebody was to sort of like run at us, then I could probably take a punch a bit better than the old man and the little elf. What do you mean you can take a punch better than me? Well, Are you saying I mean, I'm would, a feeble little creature? Would you like to take a punch? Oh no, I <laughs> just suggested you lead the charge anyways. This is okay. your path in the end. I can Don't deal worry. with a punch. I will protect you. Just move okay, slow and wait for... Well, let's move slow and wait for... <laughs> okay. Let's see what else we can find out. We have Siri inside of me as well. <laughs> I should let you arrange yourself into your, your spacing. The game is now unpaused. You can move. I will pause if we need to pause it in emergency or whatnot. You can indeed hear some growl. Also, you would note that these plateaus, you can kind of see they're about like 10, 15 feet up. And, and some of them have like a second level. Like there is this one, you can just about make off an edge here, which suggests that there's a plateau here and then it goes further up over here. Do any of them look climbable? So they, they look somewhat climbable. It would be a challenge to climb them. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, that's not a crazy can I Can I go first? You can go with me. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna pause here. I'm gonna lean into the frail old man narrative. So, as you have uh, rounded the corner, you notice there are a number of dogs over here. Some smaller, some larger. These are not... I'm gonna zoom in for chat's benefit. These are not your standard breed of dogs. These are, from what you can see, an unhealthy, kind of angry-looking dog. And if you'd like to roll me knowledge... Uh, knowledge nature. Give me a knowledge nature roll. That, sorry, again, nature roll. It's not knowledge nature, it's just nature, because it's 5e, but it comes from knowledge nature from Pathfinder. I knew what you meant. <laughs> nature rolls. Should come from me. Um, I would roll, but I cannot actually see the dogs. I can do that if that's not someone's forte. Oh yeah, so if you can't if you can't see them, then you're gonna struggle to identify them. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, I cannot see okay, them. Okay, I'm from going here. to No! <laughs> <laughs> okay, a two. Uh, they're, they're dogs. Yeah. Dogs of some kind. Uh, Svetlana, you could also attempt to roll. Any dogs. <laughs> All right, we're rolling nature. Doggy. <laughs> so, with a 16, you would know enough to know that these are goblin trained dogs. You know that they use different techniques to raise these dogs to be very aggressive to anyone that isn't a goblin and they might have like some special techniques or, or things that they do with these dogs to make them mean and cruel but you don't have like more specific information than that like a 16 is is good but you know you're getting a, a casual glance at them from a distance right so can i still lift the big dogs Yes, there are there are two types of dogs here. There are small dogs, which are you know about standard dog sized, like a decent sized dog, probably used for like chasing down stuff. And then there are the larger type dogs, which you can just just kind of see a little bit of over here. And these dogs are much more physically massive, perhaps the size of like a full goblin, or even encroaching on the size of a human almost. They great Dane sort of thing. Yeah, like they they're they could easily bowl a person over, like that kind of energy. Uh, you notice these two dogs in particular are fighting, and you do notice what looks like a goblin corpse over here, Ooh. in the brambles. Well, I mean, this one is fully wrapped up in the brambles, from from what you can see from there. Thanks for being aggressive, and they're probably fighting over some sort of food. I'm gonna read what I've seen. I'm also thinking we might be able to walk past them. Well, we have to go down that way. Are the tracks leading us there? That's what we're about to discuss. There are there are tracks going down this way. More immediate terms are: Can you make the stealth roll, which means that they don't perceive you? These guys are pretty good at perception. All right, if they're pretty good at deception, uh, perception, and we're the first people to be seen, I think I should roll the stealth on um, Syrian. I think if you both roll stealth. And I will treat it as like an advantage between the two roles. What the? F uh, well, I, I mean, okay. Um, sorry, you don't need to roll stealth because that's a, it's a natural twenty. <laughs> it's, it's disgusting. Just crit After them out. Uh, crit doesn't matter for skills, but it is still like a twenty, which is a very high roll. So you are currently not perceived by them. Although one of them does seem to be searching for a scent, and you know that they're, they're they're naturally used for tracking, it's searching for a scent. You are not currently discovered. If you want to move further up this way to try and cross their line of sight, that could be some serious perception rolls, like somebody might get discovered, or you could choose to engage them, which means that you wouldn't end up with the risk of like half the team up here, like half the team up over this side while the mage is crossing, for example, and the mage just gets torn to shreds by wild dogs. It's your call though. You could try and self-pass and not take the engagement. I think we can kick some those ass, but uh, what does everybody else feel like? I I'm okay with trying to kick some butt. I don't like... Uh, the problem with stealthily sneaking by is that you then run the risk of them finding you later. Yeah. So I'm Lock okay with... Sorting this here, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna look at Ash and uh, look up and like sort of nod at the uh, the plateau that's above us and like you know offer like my arms like do you think you can Ooh, would standing up there up? be good for you? Ooh, like maybe I can that. boost you up there if they're gonna if we're gonna 
start a fight. Sounds good. It would be a climb check, with it, which is athletics. Oh, God, no. However, you would get advantage because Elijah is helping you. It is also not that difficult a climb check because these maces are only like 10 to 12 feet up. They're not too difficult to climb. In fact, a sufficiently motivated dog could potentially make it up there. So they're not immunity, but they are a Super good defensive bear. It is less than their running speed. I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if you think that's a good idea, and if we're about to start a fight, I'm happy to help you with that. Absolutely. If you want to fight these dogs, then I would like to be up there and see them. That sounds good. We got the advantage. We should surprise them. Yeah, I, I, I agree. All right. I'm guessing me and Sirian are going to storm in. <laughs> Let me try to climb up first, right? Maybe. Yeah, so you'd want to climb first. The, the idea would be all at once, get you up there and have her, like, get into the position she wants and then go all together. Oh, you think they okay. see me probably up there, right? Yeah, true. I think they'll probably see... It. The, the, it's hard to imagine that we would climb up there without... Yeah, true. ...them noticing. So I vote we all go at the same time with all the right. assumption that we're starting a fight and take the advantage. All right. Okay. Where do we have to climb? You don't no, climb anything. You run out of uh, the trees with Svetlana. You do yeah. what you do, do best. Okay. I, I would know. Boosting the archer up to where she can see everything. These here are less trees and more like low bushes. So they're like chest high, but just just a pertinent point in, in, in case you were thinking about cover and whatnot. Good for the theater of the mind. Okay, so your plan is to get up here. Your plan is to charge in and like to end them right. So in that case, while we are in, in, engaged here, I'm going to need a climb check from Ash with advantage from Elijah. Aha! Okay, 21. Yep, yeah, absolutely gets you up. Uh, the DC was like only around, like honestly, like only around like 12. Okay. It, it wasn't. It wasn't a difficult check. Okay, so we're going to move you up here. Now that you're high up, you can actually see quite far onto the actually see docks. The the nearby mesas. Actually. Okay, so you get up there. And then these two, I believe, are going to attempt to charge in on that same, like, movement as Ash goes up there. Is that correct? Is that my understanding? Mm-hmm. Okay, in that case, can both of you make a stealth check? And this stealth check isn't necessarily to be actually stealthy. It's to get in there and stab them before they really have time to react. If you get the stealth check, uh, you'll effectively be able to act in the surprise round. Or not the surprise round, but in the round in which they are surprised. If you don't get the stealth check, they won't be surprised. This isn't exactly how surprise works. It's complicated. You just have to trust me on, on fucking with this as a GM. All right, so I roll in normal on stealth. Okay, and that's a two. I practically tripped up over myself. And that's a 14. Okay, so a 14 is enough. So we're going to roll into combat turn order. Sarian you get to move up and anyone you hit will be a surprise which means you get advantage on them but Svetlana they're going to be aware of you coming in I think that's how I'm going to work with it this is very much like an on the fly situation we are not this is all happening at the same time right yeah so you're getting up there they're charging in everything's rolling in at the same time but I need to wait you guys want to roll your initiatives for yourself yeah I gotcha Yeah. Okay, so some of these dogs have got some good initiative. They're handling their shit, right? But as this action is kind of happening on the same turn, I think we're just going to skip down to Elijah in terms of combat order. I think that's what we're going to do. Oh. All right, Elijah, you get to act. Now, you know, you made some noise over there. They know some shit's happening over there. Cool with me. All right, but you are free to act. I am not. Apologies. There we go. You're good. I was just mostly teasing you. No, no, I just meant like free to act on an emotional level. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Point is, I want to get like somewhere over here, which I know I can do. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think maybe that's technically a little cleaner. I can see stuff. I don't know if I can see any of them. Can I? Like, see and make an attack here? I mean, if you can move up to that, like, I mean, you can see through allies, generally speaking. You could see this dog, like, this dog, free and clear. Um, I mean, if we've decided we're going to fight, Elijah's going to fight. So Excellent. I'm, right now, I'm, I'm going to keep it simple. We're just going to go for a little, a little fireball. Great. Uh, so, fireball. DC 10 that may still hit. Uh, sadly, it doesn't. They're, they're actually a little bit evasive. It's like, it's a small dog, kind of an asshole to hit. Yeah, it, it's a 10, man. Roll the five. Yeah. No worries. No, I know, but I'm trying to I'm trying to provide the narrative reason for why you missed. <laughs> okay, I appreciate it. 
<laughs> like, it's not just like, yeah, you just missed the wall, fuck you. Like, fuck you, you just suck. <laughs> yeah, no, like, there's a narrative, re- like, a 10 is, it's a 10, it's an average, it's a completely average role. You missed because it was being evasive, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, seven. All right, Ash, you're up. Seven. Uh, all right. Um, I assume the dogs notice the flying fireball. Yes, they are. They are aware of noises. They are alert. They are looking around for an enemy. All right, then this is a good time to scream. There is more than three. <laughs> because you didn't see them, because I don't think you do. Uh, so there's a dog hiding here and here. If you can't see them yet. Here. Yeah, behind a rock. You can probably see the- Trying to frame this for chat. Here. There is so ping, you can just hold down your mouse on location, but I hate yeah. doing that because it's not as responsive. Yeah, it isn't. Yeah, here and here, just in case. So be aware that there are more than three targets. That being said, I'm going to just stay where I am and aim at dog number one here with my bow. That's 15, that's a hit, roll damage. You've instantly executed by putting an arrow through its skull. Shockingly enough, dogs aren't you know, super durable. Of strikes again. All right, a disassociated wild dog will attempt to pop that off. Uh, disassociated wild dog, thank you on RPG. Where are you, disassociated wild dog? There we go. Okay, so it will disengage from its fight that it's engaging with with this this creature over here, and it's going to start charging up. It's going to get to like here, and no, it's stupid. You know what? These dogs are not smart. They see an enemy, they try and eat. So it's going to charge up to here, and that's it. That's its turn. Uh, Sarian, it's your turn. As this wild dog rounds the corner, looking in, and it's it's like it literally looks shocked as you appear out of nowhere, like as far as it's concerned, right? <laughs> Okay, so I move here. Um... Nah, it's a seven. It's not enough. These guys are evasive little basses. Uh, oh, sorry. You treat this guy as surprise, so you get advantage. Roll your attack again. Oh, okay. Uh... Almost forgot about that. That's a... <laughs> oh. Advantage is a hell of a drug. Yes, okay. Roll damage. <laughs> advantage is disgusting. Uh, critical hit or... Uh, no, because it's not a natural 20. Unless you have something that crits on a 19. I don't believe you do. Okay, so you do 12. But no, she's not like a champion. You cut this wild dog in two. Not like, you know, bisecting the neck or something. You cut it like straight down from the tails of the head. One blow, chops in two, falls apart either side of you. Like literally like skittering of falling apart dead on each side of you. I'm so sorry. You've, you've, you've murdered it. I'm so sorry. It's very dead. Good. I used to this word blood, but I am going to charge in the head. Yes, indeed, Svetlana, it is your turn. All right, all right. I can move... All right, how many feet can I move? As a human, you can only move 30 feet, and you can use the measure tool to measure that before you move. It also, each square is five feet, so you can usually move six squares if you're going like yep. in a straight line and you don't really care about maximizing, like, yo, I'm taking this angle, you don't care about optimizing that. You can always think about it as move six squares. All right, well, I'm not going to jump too far ahead because I can sacred flame, sacred flame, i throw that at you. Okay, and you're, you're throwing this at this dog, presumably. Uh, e- yeah, serious wild dog. Okay, deck save. They're actually pretty good at deck saves. Ah. Made it. I was wondering how I was not doing my thing then. Oh, I just kept pressing it. Uh- yes, you did. You did keep pressing it. That's that's a lot of presses. Uh, you've used sacred flame a lot. I'm the one who rolls the save. Right. So use sacred flame. Do you use, you have bonus action use on anything? I don't think you do. Uh, no, not in this particular turn. Okay, distracted wild dog is going to start moving up. So, Ash, you're going to be very aware of this uh, distracted wild dog moving up. Uh, it comes up here, and it's, like, a little bit confused. Like, it's heard all this noise. It hasn't seen anything yet. It comes up to here, and it looks at this dead dog. It's like, uh, uh, um, this is concerning. I'm not worried. It's distracted. It is, in fact, distracted. That is true. So, it comes up to here. It sees a distracted corpse, and it's distracted by it because it's a distracted wild dog. I, who'd have thought? Right? It is probably going to try and charge someone next turn, so I should move there. Uh, the irritated wild dog. You see this noise? Come, start coming through this situation. They moving up. Fearful wild dog. They moving up as a pack this time, right? The one that ran forwards got absolutely destroyed. So they moving up as a pack. It's coming up to here. There is a pack of goblin trained dogs moving down this corridor, and they're clustered up. 
It's kind of a dangerous situation, potentially. Elisha, you're up. The bub is up and about flying around. Yeah, which is helpful. But I'm certainly, I, like, I, we kind of, I explained, I don't expect Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Harry, that dog or anything. But, if, yeah, information good. Yeah, I'm just letting you know that you're not currently getting ambushed according to the bird. Gotcha. Thank you. All right, I'm going to move here because everyone else gets to move for the dogs and I don't want anyone to get surrounded. And I'm going to, I think, cast Firebolt again. Uh, pro prove to me I need to do something else. All right, nearest target? Yeah, one of the, 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 the small dogs, not the big dog. Yeah, so I guess the one that's closer. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Like, you're still not used to this whole combat thing, right? Fireballs. Like, we'll figure it out. You, yeah, you need some practice. Like, this is just not... Like, you're not used to killing things, fundamentally. That's not your job. Fireballs Build stuff, defend thing. stuff, yeah. We're not an evocation wizard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Ash, you're up. All right, let me aim for the irritated wild dog. Well, actually, actually, I'll take the distracted big dog. Yeah, I'll take the big dog. Yeah, hit that big dog. Here we go. Mm. That's 18. That's a hit. Okay. Okay, roll damage. That's 11 damage. I mean, I'm good at one thing, I guess. <laughs> if not, you, have, you have one function. Murder big dog. Very efficiently. Biter is really good at the beginning of the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> you have eviscerated this big dog. You've taken care of the major threats here. There's only three small dogs here. They're a concern. But they're kind of demented because they're still they're still after you. Sarian, you're up. Now, you no longer get surprise advantage. There is too many doggies there. So you know, you know what? The human dies all the time. It's fine, but no doggies. No, don't kill doggy. <laughs> I'm surprised that you don't want to eat them. No, they are doggy respecting, okay? Doggy in danger, Sarian. Doggy in danger. It's not human in danger, it's doggy in danger. <laughs> it's okay, the goblins trained them wrong as a joke. Oh. Uh -oh. Okay. I move here. I don't have to eat that doggy again. I mean, you can always miss. That's it's definitely an option. No. You don't have to hit. No, I have to. <laughs> you, you, no, you've missed. You've missed. You've successfully missed, Sarian. You don't have to be responsible for this. I can see him with all, all, the, all the tears in your eyes. I'm in my face. Beautiful. Please. Oh, also, I forgot to mention this, but Nyx has a new picture. That's good. Next, would you like to tell us who created that? Uh, the person who did this picture was Tumbling Nice. I think he's in chat right now. And um, mm. he just gave me this um, beautiful illustration the, in the first so session. Nice. After, after the first session finished, and I'm so happy. <laughs> That's so cool, because you drew the original one, right, Nix? Yes. So you already have people making fan art of your art. <laughs> yes. it's, so it's very nerdy. I almost cried. That's um, he gave me the, the illustration, and I was in a in a Discord this Discord call, and I almost cried. But okay, Svetlana. I'm gonna try and block off that second dog. Let me just make sure I got my measure. So that's twenty feet away. So I'll. Oh, wait, not that far, that far. Okay. It's better get in at it with my mace. It is j um, okay, let's actually talk about this. So, we'll do the magic lesson. Let's talk, so Sacred Flame asks for a check against dexterity. Attacking with your mace asks for a check against their armor class. So we should, as a group, or really what you should be sussing out early in fights is like, do you think they have high dexterity while you're sacred flaming? And if the answer is yes, consider moving to your mace. And if the answer is no, 
keep sacred flaming. Well, so in that case, I don't. Yeah, they're wolves. I would assume their dex is pretty good and that their defense is pretty good. So it's probably going to be tough either way. So probably better to sacred flame and stay out of attack range. But both would be okay. All right, I'm going to write that down later. All right. Yeah. So we now, can talk about it again. Since we're here and they might have a high dex, and I haven't hit anything with my mace yet, I'm just going to try and mace it. Some recreational macing. Excellent. Yeah, some recreational macing. As long as he can't get round me, that's all I'm trying. Now, I would note, just as an FYI, Svetlana, Jamin did make the comment about, you know, you might not want to be in melee and such. That's a completely valid comment for most casters. You are the second toughest person in this party, and I think the highest AC or matched... Or not, you are the highest AC person in this party as well. Yeah. You, you can throw down. I was more mentioning, like, in theory, no yeah. one wants to get hit if they can avoid it. Not like, yeah. you need to run away, like Lag is saying. Like, you're good. <laughs> yeah, it was more... It was... Sure. Like, Elijah, he always needs to run away. Him being in melee, something has gone terribly, terribly wrong. You being in melee, it's a decision you make. I just want to get between the dog and Eli. Thank you. So, I roll... Wait, do I roll attack first? Attack first, always attack to hit. That's a natural one. Okay. Unfortunate, it happens. I missed. Oh. I will let I will let you in on a tiny secret. I think technically the mace in this specific circumstance has like a five percent advantage in terms of getting a hit, mm. and it does a little bit more damage. It's wolves are hard. Wolves are doing everything. Yeah, there will be other enemies where it's way more obvious. Like big slow dude with armor. Yeah, probably make him pass a dex save instead of hitting him with your mace. Yeah, and then the opposite. Like most of our fast dudes are going to be like better off with the mace. Absolutely. But okay, you have, you have in fact missed your attack, that's your action. I'm assuming you don't have a bonus action that you're using because nobody needs healing. No, I'm okay with that. Excellent. It's so now for the wild dogs to, to get stuck in. Has everybody missed except me in this turn? Uh, okay, so this irritated wild dog is going to move up to here. Slightly circuitous, but it's going to be easier for me managing some stuff. Uh, and Sarian, this attack is going to be towards you. You've, you've managed to avoid all of the worst parts of these things because you killed both the big dogs so i can't knock you down however these guys are getting advantage because they have pack tactics pack tactics allows them to be absolutely vicious when they're in a pack like this they get advantage fuck <laughs> okay well that's fine we have a fearful wild dog that is also going to attack sarian because sarian did cut a dog in two previously uh, it's also going to get advantage. So it's also going to miss. <laughs> As these dogs, like, they try and bite into your armor and just, like, find nothing but, like, scale mail armor plates. <laughs> All right, and finally, the furious the furious wild dog. Uh, it Pack Tactics does actually trigger on this, I think. Let me double check. Oh, so no, it doesn't. So this is just a standard attack. So normal attack versus Svetlana, and that's a four. So these wild dogs just like, like they bound onto you and try and sink their teeth into you, and that they're they're trying to tear you apart, and your armor just shrugs it off. Absolutely no care in the world. Elijah, you're up. Yeah, I'm seeing that the two girls can definitely take the wolves despite advantage. Elijah's just gonna keep blasting. I'm not really worried about needing to to do anything reactive here. Yeah. I, too, make the same decision every turn, Svetlana, about how to attack. Uh, but instead of a mace, I have Firebolt. And the other thing I have is Frostbite, which also which attacks Constitution. Yeah, that's that's definitely a... Similar decision to you every turn. Okay, so this hits, obviously. Yep. 20 is good. Nine damage. Apply damage. You set the Furious Wild Dog ablaze. It howls in, in pain and terror as you quickly snuff out its existence. Nice. All right. All right, Ash, you're up. All right, I'm gonna aim for this dog. It's a low, longbow action, number three. Miss. Ah! You're trying to launch an arrow into this mess, and like you know, you're del you're desperately trying to avoid putting an arrow in the back of Sarian's skull because you know, you kind of like that skull, at least half of it, because you're such a massive racist. Oh, thank you for pointing that out. It's true. <laughs> I like at least half of them. <laughs> and, you know, between that, you know, you lose the arrow, it's just, you can't, you can't, you can't get it where you need to go. Unfortunate. Well, it's hard circumstances. Sarah, you're up. Okay. You're I, doing great. I, 
I don't want to do this great, okay? I want to go home with my mom. <laughs> and I have I have to I I have I have to Finally. It's a nine. It's a nine. You're so distracted by this mess. She's a mess. Okay. <laughs> I'm fine. Just emotionally destructive fighting these dogs. There is dog blood everywhere. You cut one in two earlier. Like, its guts are still steaming back there. The dog right next to you just got set ablaze and died screaming and howling. I'm going to need to go to therapy. Yeah, no, like, adventurers need therapy. That's why they're always killing shit and going nuts at taverns. All right, Svetlana, you're up. I am horrified also by the dog blood, but I want to be there to support Syrian. So I'm going to step forward and hit this, what is it? It irritated wild dog. With yes. My mace. Excellent. What your attack? That's a crit, roll crit damage. So you just click on it and you click uh, crit. Oh, I could... that's that's not it. That's okay. okay. You just need to roll another d6, right? Yeah, technically, but I'm fine with it. Just re-rolling the entire thing. It, it isn't it isn't a big deal. So you do 10 damage as you take this mace, and you're like, okay, okay, I've got I've got the weight of it, right? Last one wasn't really practiced. You no, know, I don't really use this this much. This time, mm -hmm. you just slam down on the dog set, like it's jumping up to attack you, and you just crush its skull into the ground. No! Basically detonating its head. Instant death. What are you doing? No. <laughs> Little doggy. Poor doggette. Beautiful. There is there is one dog remaining. And you know what? Uh this this dog is like it's it's dumb, right? It's kinda demented, but it's not like it's like ninety percent demented, not a hundred percent demented. S unlike the Goblins, interestingly enough, those things were insane. This thing's gonna try and run away from you. Like it's seen the absolute like gore fest that you've created, uh, and it's gonna try and it's gonna try and run away. So if you would both uh, both Svetlana and Sarian would like to make opportunity attacks, you don't have to. So an opportunity attack is a normal attack that you make with a normally a melee weapon when an enemy leaves your threatened area. This enemy right here is leaving a threatened area, which is. You know, for you, it's this this set of boxes, and for Svetlana, it's here. And because it's leaving this square, it's provoking. I won't. You won't. Uh, Svetlana will. Svetlana will, however, miss as as this dog sprints away. Doing? Why are you trying to hit the doggy again? What is wrong with you, human? Uh, I, 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 uh, oh, okay, yeah. What, what did the dog away. do you? Nothing. <laughs> Yeah. Nothing. It was with your friends. They're just trying to have fun. I do feel bad. <laughs> and so it's going to take a, a a dash action and just it is attempting to leave the map. If you want, we can end the combat here, or you can pursue them. I don't want to chase the dog. Okay. I I could probably hit the dog. I just want you guys to know I could I could probably hit the dog. <laughs> no, you can't. No, I can. I, I, no, you I, can't. I, I have effectively 150 feet from where I'm standing. I you can hit can't hit the doggy. <laughs> yeah, I, I also feel quite bad now. I'm covered in dog blood. It's run away. <laughs> all right, fine. But we need to check out these bodies that I see. All right, all right. Okay, in that case, are, are you all agreeing to end combat rather than chase it down? Yeah, I can't wait yes. for it to go get its parents. You're entering the turn tracker as the dog runs away off the map. Now, if you don't mind, I am going here. Sit down and think what's happening right now. What happens? Because I am sick and I have a trauma. Uh, Thank you. I'm going to um, sit with Syrian because I am covered in blood and I am not used to killing. I mean, I am totally used to killing. I'm super strong and all that. I climb down, just for free. Yeah, like, you're not in a stressed environment, so you can take 10 on it and just get down. All right, I'll get down. Is uh, Levana, I... can I hug you? I, I'll go check on the girls. <laughs> Are you doing yes. okay? I, I saw you cry. You. I heard you crying on the battlefield. What's, what happened? <laughs> I, will, I will give you all the hugs, Syrian. <laughs> this is horrible. All right, yeah, fine. Uh, I want to check out the dogs. I want to pillage some of their teeth. You want to pillage their teeth? Just a few for my collection. Okay, well, it's not going to be difficult. Um, with what Svetlana did for one of their skulls, there's teeth all over the place. Just give me, like, one or two big ones. Nice, shiny ones. Okay. 
Yeah, you, you, you're you able to do that. If you want to add that to your sheet, like as an actual item, you can just add it as a trinket. Did, did you see that they have no soul? They are just there with between all the dead doggies. They have no soul. I, I just, I'm going to look away from the teeth grabbing. Cause... I mean, they don't have a soul now. What is wrong with them? Fucking hell. They don't have a soul now. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Oh, no. Oops, oops. Well, they're grieving. Uh, I'm not yeah. going to interrupt that, but I'm going to investigate these dead bodies. Okay, so these goblin corpses are... Okay, are that, yeah, they're definitely goblins. You you can see that now that you're up close, 100%, right? Like, from, from a distance, you think, probably, now you're up close, 100%. Uh, you notice the brambles are here, yeah, and... Interesting to me. What's more interesting is that, by and large, the brambles are embedded through the goblins. Are they growing from the goblins, or...? They they were at some point used as a bludgeon. For example, uh, this goblin over here, you can see now quite clearly, uh, that head was smashed into the ground by this bramble. Okay. Very dank. Uh, you know, things. the the goblins, the goblin corpses themselves are like at least a few days old. They're, they're pretty ripe and gross. Okay, given that they're ripe and gross, I want to do something really ripe and gross. Okay, fantastic. And, and I, I would like to know how similar they are to the other corpses I have found, and I am prepared to do such disgusting things as cut open a goblin's stomach to see what its contents are. Okay, uh, I mean... We, we think we're, we were, the other goblins were like starving and emaciated. Are they starving and emaciated? If so, I probably don't need to, but like... They're, they're, they're like a couple day old corpse. That's a lot of bloating potentially to deal with. So I think this might require some kind of heal or medicine check, or if you can think of a better skill that would be uh, I mean, relevant in your case. I would love to capital I investigate and put all of the clues together, but like- uh, I think investigate whatever would be valid. You can roll investigation. That would potentially, like that would get you a more kind of like observational intuitive knowledge. Whereas a what's the medicine yeah. skill in this game? An autopsy. I need to put yeah. puzzle pieces together. Here. Yeah, like a medicine role would potentially get you more accurate, specific medical information. An investigation, like you just you, you have a look and see what you can see. Mm -hmm. Different information, still valid. Great roll. That with a six, the goblin doesn't look like it's in good health. Good to know. Good to know. I thought I had determined that, but I like to confirm it. Yeah, you've confirmed it doesn't look like it's in good health. It's gross and messed up. Its joints are kind of fucked up. But whether that's because of it being like a several day old corpse or because of something that was prior to that, you don't really know for certain. I'm going to go look at the other corpse and I'm going yeah. to see if it's the same. Like kind of, is it over? Is it basically the same? Yeah, so you can tell with a casual glance that it's it's casual information. It's it seems to be in the same state, apart from the clear injuries of where the the brambles have tried to destroy it. The nuance of where it's been crushed. <laughs> yes, you would notice also that the brambles here. So when you were looking at the brambles previously, right? You you walked through that area with the brambles where the Elthrin was. Those brambles all looked very like active. Uh, and, and lifelike. The ones yeah. in this plateau. These ones, they look kind of dry and old. And obviously it's raining right now. They shouldn't look particularly dry. This is generally gets a lot of water. Like you can see how this channels water into this area. So they, you know, it's, a, it's a odd. Well, I'm dumb, so I didn't put anything together about this. Um... Yeah, it's, it's not huge amounts. I guess I'll walk over to Sama and ask, not Sama, Silana, and ask um, if she's feeling up to it. Uh, never mind. Don't worry about it. I'm just gonna say, there, I don't, I don't know how much we can learn from those goblin corpses. Killing dogs sucks, and I'm just gonna kind of trudge off and continue gonna... to leave them alone because I'm, I'm old. They, they don't need me around. They'll come find me if they need to talk. I, I think I'm gonna take the hint and have a look. Because I've got some medicine ability, so I think I should be able to see if there's anything else that he's missed. Can, can I go with you? I don't want to be alone. <laughs> I'll take you with me. Yeah, dude, she needs muscle nurse, obviously. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> that, that, that gives her advantage, right? <laughs> Everyone knows that a big muscular you, nurse human. gives you advantage. You're just dead. You, you were dead. And, and, 
You feel nothing for those doggies. What is wrong with you? Medicine. Okay, so medicine. These goblins were clearly unhealthy and emaciated. That that bone structure, you can work it out. Like they they are bloated now, but like with the bone structure and the muscle structure, yeah, they definitely emaciated. Uh, are you investigating the contents of their stomachs? Um. Stomachs is already open, isn't it? So, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, but you're gonna have to, like, poke in there, right? right I'll, I'll poke in there a little bit. Okay, so with a 24 medicine roll, uh, you can identify fragments of bone, and more importantly, you can identify those fragments of bone as humanoid. All right. So, humanoid as goblin humanoid, but I'm also thinking... You can't... You can't necessarily identify more than that. Like, they're humanoid, but you've got fragments of bone you're working with. Like, you're not like, oh, this is a... All right, so it's a... more carnivorous goblins. Exactly. I, th I think them having actually... So they're carnivorous, but they actually seem to have eaten more recently than... Yes. Than so previous bodies. Which yes. is something or might be irrelevant, but is kind of interesting. So they, they've definitely eaten at some point. But that at this point, that may have been a couple days ago now, on account of them being dead. Like, right. corpses tend to quickly get very gross. I'm going to relay this information to um, the group. Also, I apologize for this. I should have suggested this earlier. Could everyone that's come down here and had an investigate? So I'm, that's definitely Svetlana and Elijah. That might also be Sarian if she so chooses. Could you all roll me a perception check? So... Uh, Elijah, you know, you're wandering around, you're, you're examining stuff. It looks a bit weird, the fact that the goblins seem to have gone up to the north decision point, right? Like, the, the split. Let me show this for chat real quick. It's gone up to the, the decision point and decided to not travel onwards, right? Because there's no reason to come down here. If they're going up this way, like, there's a second path of tracks going up this way. There's no reason for them to go up this way. It seems weird that they'd come up this way and then go down here and then back up here. Mm -hmm. Svetlana, with your perception check, you notice within the kind of tracks that there's, there's a very different pacing in the tracks. Because these were, like, good, solid pace tracks here. And then these tracks are a sprint down here. So something... Run. Yeah, something spooked them to run this way. So there's probably something scary up ahead that road. I'm going to ask the rest of the group, like, after re relaying this knowledge, I'm going to ask the rest of the group where do they want to go? Because I'm a bit, like, something's killed them. I think it was the Elfrin. But something sent them this way. Well, then do we just want to keep following their tracks and try to learn more? Okay. Right? What else is there to do? We, we could go home at... <laughs> you know... Do you know that doggy that ran away? Maybe he smelled something and that is why he decided to leave. I think maybe it's because we scared him. Begging. Maybe, but... Or maybe it was the insane amount of other dogs being butchered in its immediacy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I have a trauma, okay? Be nice <laughs> with me. You know, I'm just pointing things out here. Uh, where right. can you put me down uh, on the ground again? I'm still at on the mountain top, technically. Okay, yeah, the the elevated wall thing, that's just broken, I guess. Okay. Cool. So I learned true side. That's fine by me. Just broken shit, it's fine. It's fine. I it's just worried. memorized the whole layout. It's fine. Yeah, you've memorized it, and because you've memorized it, you can guess where stuff's going to go in the future, obviously. Easy. <laughs> we also have the bird, so like... Yeah, just the bird, it's the bird. So you're just... God, it makes so much sense, okay. It makes... Like, the bird's carrying a mirror, and you're looking at the mirror, and your perception check is like, ooh, there's some shit over there. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the bird can talk to me telepathically, and uh, Ash and I can talk normally. So, like... I, I know, but the idea of the bird carrying a mirror is much more amusing to me. <laughs> <laughs> also, Seroxis, I appreciate that. I, I don't know why you would do that, but I appreciate it. Crafted a magical set of goggles. Oh my god. That would allow other people to see through the bird's eyes also. That would be quite a challenge. We don't have anyone who's good at that. We'd have to find someone. But okay, I think you guys have probably gathered as much information as you're going to gather from this little section. And you could probably move on to follow the tracks north, which is where they ultimately end up. Going to go ahead. It's all yours, Svetlana. You're doing great. <laughs> Svetlana's just fucking MVPing this team. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Those hot dice handling stuff. Yeah, I, I'm great at doing this. Everybody follow me. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Nobody questioned otherwise. <laughs> you got okay, just... so you move forwards 
and you find yourself at the edge of the map. Before we make any poor choices at the edge of the map. Never mind. Right. Before we make any more poor choices. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you've got that poor choice energy. Okay, so. <laughs> We were all just, there's a lot of just, just uh, flippant movement. That's poor choice energy. <laughs> you are, you know, presumably following these tracks. You can still kind of, you, you can still track them. The rain is starting to wear them away a bit. Like it's getting a little bit more difficult as the rain works through stuff. So you're probably happy you started tracking them early today. You know, potentially would have lost these tracks otherwise. So these tracks up here are like sprinting tracks on this map and then as you get further out those sprinting tracks kind of reduce and it seems to be moving more at a quick intentional pace but there's a lot fewer of them and that is also contributing to them just being more difficult to track as you move forwards down this this path you think back to these dogs these emo this emotional moments and also the kind of, you're discussing this information between yourself and various knowledges of things i'm thinking that like Y'all can make an insight roll to try and kind of piece together with your collective information what happened back there. Ah, Svetlana got us. Svetlana, what the I'm, fuck are these dice? I was thinking I about have it, no but idea. yeah. Have no, I just been the... consistently rolling 20s all the time? Like, oh no. You've been, you've not been rolling 20s, but like on the skill rolls, you've been rolling hot. I'm expecting to look up and see that formula say 20 plus 3 <laughs> plus 0 <laughs> plus 2. Yeah, like. I'm actually rolling? <laughs> No, no, that's, she's definitely rolling. She's just got those loaded dice. Yeah, the D is in there. It's, it says D20. <laughs> <laughs> so you work, you work together and you put bits of information together. For example, the nature of the Elthrin, the what occurred. And Svetlana, you, with your 25, put forwards the concept that, you know, Elthrin, are, they're, they're fake creatures. Mm -hmm. Illusion magic isn't out of the realm of possibility. Uh -huh. Now, you don't know the specific nature of that illusion magic, but it might account for some of the things you've seen. Svetlana, are you ready for another magic lesson? Yes. Do you know what ritual casting is? Okay, so when I summoned and I'll snap and, you know, our swallow or whatever he is will appear. Mm. Be like, you know, when I do this, I do this ritually. Essentially, what that means mechanically, so like the out of character explanation for this would be that you take an extra 10 minutes and you pay all of the component costs of the spell, but it does not cast you a spell slot and you do not have to have the spell prepared in order to cast it. That last thing is what's really interesting for you, a druid, right? Because you know all of your spells, but you Cleric. some of them every day, right? So the ritual spells you have access to even when you don't choose them. I bring this up because detect magic is a ritual spell that all druids have access to at level one. So we could spend 10 minutes uh, for you to ritually cast Detect Magic. I meant Cleric, sorry, thank you. For you to ritually cast Detect Magic, and that might help us with all of the illusion magic we, that you are suggesting we may have encountered. The in-character explanation would be, let me show you how I cast magic when I have a lot of time on my hands. Does that make sense? No, that makes sense. I'm just okay. looking for Detect Magic on my thing. I don't think I've got Detect Magic. So as a Cleric, as Jamin said, you know all spells. Right, so I don't have to have the actual thing I think I can just cast it. What do I need to roll? It's not so much a roll thing. You you can just say, I'd like to cast Detect Magic, and then Detect Magic just happens. All right, I will cast Detect Magic. Eli has been teaching me this ritual, so... Yeah, he's, he's, he's taught you about how to ritual cast. Yeah, you, you I don't know how to do this spell. You do. But I know how to ritually cast spells, so I will introduce you to this concept. Ah, thank you very much. So I start actually learning from this, and I start preparing the thing and do the detect magic spell. For the duration, you sense the presence of magic in 30 feet of you. You sense magic in this way. You can use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic. You learn its school of magic, if any, and the spell can penetrate most barriers, but is blocked by one, one foot of stone, one inch of common material, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. That's the baseline and elements of detect magic. So basically, within 30 feet, you can see auras of magic. You can also theoretically see auras of magic that has happened previously, if they were very strong magic, but they decay with time. It also won't tell us what spell was cast, but it will tell us what school, like it says. Yes. So it's helpful to know that something is an illusion, even if you might not know what it actually is. Like, we not, might not be able to dispel that magic yet. 
I think I might be able to do that next level. I'd have to go look at my spell list again. But it helps. It's good for us to know, like, that's an illusion. Like, maybe we can investigate it from that point. So that's why this might help us right now. I mean, if you were to use Detect Magic, what would your goal to be to use on right now is what I'm wondering. This been some kind of illusion? Are we in some kind of illusion? It is potentially that you're in some kind of illusion, but currently you're walking away from where you think some illusion probably happened and you're heading, you know, away from that. Like, this is when you come to the realization, you see the tracks change and you kind of be like, mm, OK, well, there was a thing there that wasn't there. Like, this might be the reason and based on the Elthrin's thing. So if you wanted to go back and check that out, you'd have to go, you know, walk back a bit. You spend 10 minutes to cast the spell. And then the spell is you'd have active for 10 minutes. The spell is active for 10 minutes after that, so you can investigate stuff that way. I think I'm going to defer to the group and ask them what we should be doing, because I'm... I, I think we should do it because I... I think, like, we could be getting a lot of false information right now. All right. If right? the old man says so, I'm going to follow what he says. I trust the old man. Not yes. with my life, but... Okay, so you spend, like... 10 minutes to... Well, first you head back a little bit because you've walked on a bit like while you've been having this discussion. Like, actually, no, we need to go back. So you head back, right? Uh, a few minutes walk back. Then you spend a moment to richly cast the tech magic. You invoke a god and you're like, hey, we need to find this out. Please, will you beseech me this knowledge? Uh, whichever god that you think would be most appropriate for this. Um, Stravelog? Uh, Svarog, the, the Lord of Light. Okay. Yeah. To bring you enlightenment, that makes absolute sense. So you cast this spell, you bring up Detect Magic, and uh, a couple things of importance as you kind of scan the area with Detect Magic. The first thing is, like, you try and find the bounds of this, but you find that there is an aura of illusion, but it's very faint. It's a decaying aura. So it was probably a powerful spell when it occurred in this area, but it's now very much decaying. It is not an active spell. But what's really curious... What's really strange, and something you weren't expecting, is something I'm not going to share with the group. I'm going to send you a secret message. Summer. Summer, have you got all that information? Do you, do you feel you comprehend that? And I very much comprehend what I am seeing. Now what that means, uh, well, you know, uh, who knows? Uh... I'm going to underline that, not so much in my notebook, but in my life decision. And I'm yep. going to actively keep that to myself. Okay. So you are keeping that information secret. I don't know what it is or fully understand. I know something, but at this point in time, I don't have enough to actually go on. So I am keeping that to myself. Excellent. Understood. It's very sensible, which means that we have to deal with the... We will now navigate the faint but possibly powerful remnants of an illusion that were in this area. So that, that is the information that you would be able to hand to the party. Or I presume you would hand to the party. Yes. Unless you also want to keep that secret, which would be kind of weird. <laughs> no, I'm going to tell them about that. But this also means that I, I possibly might imagine that the Elfrin is casting illusion magic, which should be we should definitely keep our eye out on. Like, they might not be attacking us now. It might not even be the Elfrin, but th this is my suspicion so that I am relaying to the group. That is a decided possibility. There is a lot of power in illusion magic, but it's generally most powerful when you don't know it's being cast. Hmm. So I would, just based on the placement, is it possible that the Elfrin made the path appear just different to get them to run into that area where they got killed? That is definitely within the bounds of something an Elfrin could do. You think? Uh, I mean, it looks like. I guess I'm 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 prof I'm proffering this possibility to Svetlana and the group. Like these tracks seem like like you know the tracks don't really make sense. Why would they lead this way? But the answer would be like if the Elthrin made them think this was the way they should they normally go. Oh, possibly the only way they could go. Right. Yeah. Like, like make that look like a wall. That's a pretty big yeah. illusion. I kind of suspect that it puts something big and scary there and they run away from it. Yeah, yeah or, or like I said, they literally just made it look like that's where the rock wall is. Connecting, I don't know if you guys can see my measurements. Yeah. yeah. Like like there or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like if you put a wall there, they would just walk down this path. Yeah. yeah. So 
and that's a pretty big illusion. So I think like I can think of multiple explanations for I put an illusion there that that basically purposely got these goblins killed. Yes. <laughs> like ran them into like a wolf den. I suspect that since they are goblin, the the wolves probably came with the goblins. Mm. And that they just got um, rounded off into an area where the um, elf ring could kill them. Okay, that's so. So, question: Do when you look at the roots, do you see anything? The brambles. Yeah, we were calling them. Okay, so on upon examining the brambles with detect magic, if there was magic here, you can no longer detect it. But if this happened several days ago, if this was magic, it might be lesser magic which case it would have faded by now okay. or it could be that this is parts of its natural body okay so they were alive and it's it's cut off it's you know one of its bajillion fingers or whatever yeah it's left it there okay all right that makes sense that does imply that the elthrin's reach is pretty massive <laughs> because this was a long enough walk for it to start raining by the time you got here so if this is a big Say, I think we didn't mess with it, like or, network. Yeah, or it's like the network or something. Like Elthrin are complex creatures. We knew a lot about them last time. Like we I think that was we rolled well collectively on knowing stuff about them, if I recall. But yeah, that's an impressive range. Or like I said, it's something else entirely. Yeah, your instincts are saying this is some Elthrin doing. Right, with all the information you've collected, the fact that you came back here, you got that illusion. Like, all this is summing up to you, the Elthrin somehow handled this. Now, it could be that maybe the Elthrin can only extend this far sometimes, and it decided that this was important. Or maybe the Elthrin is just terrifyingly fucking powerful. Well, we should keep finding out. There's only one, one way to find out, right, guys? It, it's really making me wonder about that mission that he gave us to kill the boy's father, because... If he is that terrifyingly powerful that he can get down here and kill these goblins, why isn't he killing the father? That's a good Great question. Nature. Roll me a nature roll. All right. That's you, not me, right? I'm the Arcana guy. Wait, who's the nature person? Is it me I still? think it's Ash. Yeah, whoever, whoever thinks they might have a good go at it. Okay, so Ash, 21. You know that a lot of fey creatures have... A lot of rules or discussions or considerations with like what and where is considered home and potentially the ways in which it can act might have been limited by some kind of accord. That means it can't act directly and can only act via proxies. It could be that it is limited from attacking a, a creature in its home. Like these are all definitely things that fake creatures have been limited by before. There, there are often very arcane rules. Arcane is in the unknowable, not arcane as in magical. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of arcane and esoteric rules as to how fey allow themselves to interact with the world because fundamentally as beings of generally a very fundamental chaos and a natural wild energy the ways in which they can are constrained is not necessarily logical by most standards you share that with the group is it possible that the elfin is unable to do anything within the village because it is protected by some kind of deity but salat the honey keeper is a latter rather I think that that makes a lot of sense to me. <clears throat> that could be more true. On, and just the honeykeeper as well, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That their pantheon of gods would sort of deny natural influence, if you will. You think of the Fae as sort of being gods of the natural realm? Yeah, something like that. And then they do just well, pray it, to some of the gods there. It definitely looks like the Elfrin is trying to deal with the goblins as well. Yeah. Yeah, they're on the same side, but the Elthrin uh, only has domain over what it has domain over, right? Mm -hmm. Like, the Elthrin protects not towns, not cities, it seems like. It does make and, me wonder... Like, broadly generalize. It does make me wonder if there's something that Sedemir has done which has caused the goblin thing. I kind of feel like we should find out where the goblins, you know, find more goblins, see if we can find out what's causing them. You fall on those tracks. Yeah, it's a question. If it's Sodomy himself, 
if it's a family thing, if that was going on for a while, if that maybe is the elf friend going out of his way to destroy his family, or, or if it's just directed towards the father. Because it seems like it's directed to just his father, right? Well, he doesn't want to the, kill the whole family. Um, the mother, there was a very a glowingly positive uh, sort of review of the mother. Right. So, which, yeah, I would agree with you. We don't know if the children are half or full elves, right? Yeah, we don't really know their parentage situation, but yeah, that's right. We know the mother has, like, cut off her ear, like, or, yeah. like, like she's, like, rounded off her ears. So, uh, just with regards to the children, you would have seen them. You would have been able to glance at them in the morning, and there was no very obvious elven feature, but if the mother was a half-elf and they're quarter-elf, they might not be showing it yet, right? So, like, you can't guarantee. I kind of had this theory that the boy, because it's the oldest, right? It's yes. The oldest may have doing elfy things. Well, promising the firstborn is not an uncommon offering. Also true. That is common enough, but you don't need any yeah. like, knowledge rolls for that. You just know, like, offering a firstborn is... People do that all the time. Okay, but who would have offered son the mother? And why would the elfin want to kill him still after that? Yeah. Well, to me, it seems it be, to... It would be that maybe he reneged on the deal. Okay, okay. So we do I... I'm going to suggest a break. I think you guys are probably going to end up talking in circles if I let you, which is fine. I, you're really into this plot, right? And you're trying to work it out. And I love the fact that you're puzzling through it. But I think you are just going to end up talking in circles if you keep going through. So I think we hit up a break. When we come back, we, we push on. And you're going to have time to talk and think about it in yourself if, if you want to on the break. But I definitely need a break. Yeah, which All right. for me. Yep. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to be uh, back in a few minutes. Okay, so when we last left off, you were discussing what you were going to do after finding these dogs and how the situation relates to the Elthrin and the relationships, like whether it has illusion magic and all of this. And you fundamentally decided that you were going to move forwards and try and find more information. So you're going to pursue the tracks again. Now, the first part of this you've already covered, so you can you can quickly get out there. However, the, the rain is winding on. So I would like another survival check for whoever is leading this pursuit. and uh. And somebody can be helping them to give them advantage. Oh, also. I don't think she needs advantage. <laughs> she doesn't need advantage, she's fantastic. Svetlana, like just roll in 19 to 20. Like you just, just plus 50, like just beautiful. It's good, hot dice. Serian, because you had a mental breakdown after that last fight, have some inspiration. Makes so much sense. It feels like a weird thing to say, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so inspiration, Serian, if you're, if you're not aware. On your character sheet, oh, you've already marked it up. You've already worked it out. Excellent. Yes. For everyone else's benefit, there's a little inspiration checkbox on your character sheet on the right side. Basically, when you have inspiration, you can say, I'm going to spend this inspiration and get an advantage on a dice roll. Or you can give it to someone else to do the same thing. So like, you know, if someone's trying to make a difficult attack and you're like, oh, we really need this roll to, to hit, you can be like, I'm going to give you inspiration. Bam. Gets advantage with no penalties. Does that make sense? Everyone everyone got that in their heads? Thank you for the inspiration, so? boss. Excellent. We travel onwards, marching down these tracks. Svetlana finds Ash's meddling completely unnecessary for this tracking and simply goes, these are the tracks, follow them. You move forwards through these kind of rocky valleys and you open up into a, a more kind of forested area. It seems like it's gotten wide enough that you've got some tree growth in here. Based on that, this must have happened a long time ago, perhaps some kind of basin at some point. Not currently, though. Currently, it's full of trees. And you follow these tracks and you come across a, I'd say a clearing, but it's not really a clearing because of the amount of the amount of terrain within it. At the edge of this kind of pseudo clearing full of trees, the tracks trend towards a, a cliff face. I'm going to bring you in in this space. To the north of you, there is a cliff face. You can see this, like you're underneath a tree right now. So you can see the north area, there is a cliff face. You can see a potential, an interesting area in that there's there's a felt, there's a, there's a stump of a tree heading off in this direction. So to your northwesterly direction. In fact, if we zoom the game camera out a little bit, for those on, on stream, there's a, there's a stump of a tree and like an opening the cliff face over here. Like in that same direction. Seems like someone's deliberately opened up this this area over here. But you are now in the area where the tracks seem to to peter out, and you're not 
we're not exactly sure where they are, but they're in this area, so we must investigate. Wondering who's got the best perception. I'm I a think burb. I've got Always this. Always burb. When, when, when in doubt, burb. S- send burb to cliff face while we all slowly move uh, to the edge of the clearing. We should, we should follow the obvious path. Yeah, yeah, I think I think I think it's good. I think it's always good to follow the path of least resistance when scouting. Like and kind of have an SOP. Okay, so the bub to clarify, the bub is flying around circles to try and keep an eye on things, see what's happening. Um, I want to send it to the actual cliff face and see what's okay. like down. Like, you know, is it like how steep? Like, what what's going on over there? Um, okay, because we can we can investigate the immediate clearing. I think as long as we do it smartly with relative ease. So. Notably, the cliff, the cliff face area itself is actually like a lot more sheer than the ones you were dealing with earlier. On top of it, there does seem to be a forest, but there's like a good maybe 40, maybe even 50 foot scramble to get up onto the higher areas. It, it looks very difficult to get up there. It is definitely going to be more difficult. Like it's going to be a serious climb check if you want to make it up there. Well, that's good. That means it's uh, it's safe, if you will. If there is anything up there, it would be on a very precarious positioning and you can't, your bird can't see anything immediately. Uh, if you'd like me to, if you'd like to roll a visual perception check with advantage, I think it's it's D20 plus two with advantage. Sorry, D20 plus three with advantage for your bird. Okay, so 19. So technically you get advantage on all visual perception checks with the bird, but I don't think you need it. Yeah, we don't need it here. Uh, with a 19, you are very, like your bird is very confident that there is nothing particularly out of place on the top area of it. Nothing uh, up there waiting to like pounce. Yeah, yeah nothing, nothing you see. There's no like weapons or, or drop traps or anything also. At least nothing large enough that would be detected. Uh, notably, they also detect like because that was a pretty high roll. Uh, they also detect that there is, like, you, you can see an obvious gap on, on the left of the cliff face area here. It's quite an obvious gap. But your bird notice is a much, a much smaller one just here, to the direct north of you. It looks like it would require squeezing to get through, but it, it does look like it goes into the cliff face. A child? A child could get in there. An, an, adult, an adult could get in there, but it would not be, like, it would be, like, a kind of sliding situation like you would be going sideways and... slim and elegant yeah you, you, you yeah you, you could do it certainly like you wouldn't necessarily need a roll to get in there but you would need like you would be in a like if someone attacked you while you're in that position you'd be very unhappy if we let's send him down with the rope or down with the rope that's what we want because we've got you know sarian and i can pull him up in a jiffy so you like wrap the rope around the waist and push, push like let them squeeze through and then just pull them back if okay yeah, okay yeah, yeah we can i'm understanding the plan anyway because we don't know what 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 they're gonna find down there so if yeah find uh the cavern you know cavernous heap of nothing uh we can we can save them from the void absolutely absolutely okay so uh, you guys have got like as much information as you're gonna get like standing over in this corner feel free to navigate as you would I'm assuming you guys are deliberately moving as stealthily as you can at this juncture. Yeah, and we're moving up to this northern thing. That's where you guys want to go. I'm going to follow you. Side note, uh, making making these trees like semi-translucent so they layer over your characters uh, actually hell. <laughs> like this map was hell to construct. I'm glad it looks great. Yeah. After the first map, I'm nervous. Can I sit down at home? So you wouldn't... That's sending Ash down there. Ah. Uh, yes, with regards to fitting down there, you think you, like, it, it's got just enough room that you could get through here. Like, it would be rocks to your front, your fore and aft kind of thing, like uh, shimming down sideways to get through here. But... As you can see through, uh, you can see there's a slight, very slight glow in there. Like as, as you kind of you know work your vision back and forth, there's, there's something slightly glowing in there. You see some roots in there. There are a lot of roots. These are different kind of roots than the brambles. Like, these are very different roots. There are roots. These could easily be from the trees above, like just growing through the rocks. So some sparkle there. I don't know if that's intentional. White spot. Uh, that white spot is unintentional. Unintentional, right? And we'll ignore that one. There's no white spot. 
Yeah, I'm totally down to just squeeze in there and shimmy my way through it. That's if we think that's sensible. I don't think it's super sensible, but I'm excited. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say, uh, good luck. I, I, I don't. I am worried for you. I genuinely. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I am genuinely worried for you, and we can see a glowy thing. If anything happens, come right back. So I do have some rope. Do you want to? I think. Some... I think. I think if we think it's safe to tie it to you. It would be smart for Sarian to have it, because, uh, yeah. And yeah, she can pull you out. And just pull me out if I scream for help. Mm. I lay like there. I like it. Yeah, you're all about safety, mm. right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So you tie a rope around Ash's, uh, I'm probably like you're probably tying like some kind of harness because you want to be able to just haul them straight through. If you haul just from the hips, yeah. you might not. So there's like a harness situation going on. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> on the shoulders and saying so. or something. I don't think I brought rope. I don't think that's in my bag. I should have bought it. I have a lot yeah. of rope, I think. I don't know if it's a lot. It's rope. Elf on a leash, exactly. So I'm just assuming <laughs> you've got some training with ropes variously. You can create a harness. You don't need to worry about it. It's going to be secure. Your body will break before the rope unties. So uh, you're going to shimmy through this hole. This, this could get a little bit awkward uh, because of the way it's made. Mm. You might end up seeing through the the map. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Oh, oh, okay, okay. And then can you can you can you step through for further? Okay, okay. Things seem to be working. All right, I don't see. Mm, okay, what's interesting here is you should have dark vision and you don't. So we're gonna try and fix that. There we go. I also have dark vision. That is going to affect what I see through the hole. Yes, because it's dark in there. It, w it would affect what you can see. What would I find okay. is? Because I can't find it. Uh, dark vision. In dark. <laughs> uh, what do you... Effects. Oh, I can see now. Okay. Okay, give me a second to add some shit to your sheets. Because y'all y'all, y'all can't, can't do sheet. That's the issue. <laughs> Sorry, that's a terrible joke. It's okay. I'm pretty sure I had dark vision last time now. Okay, both of the dark vision people should have dark vision now. You notice the dark vision is in black and white because vision doesn't give you color, basically. I see some strange glowing light in there now. You do see some strange glowing light to your north. I am concerned. Can I perceive this? Uh, w you can roll a perception check on it, certainly. Roll it. Go for it. Maybe. With a 21, uh, you can hear a faint rustling of air and you can see a, a moving light, which is strangely uncomfortable. It, it, you feel kind of nervous energy coming out of it. I do feel nervous. Further than that, and more importantly, like now that you're kind of at the precipice with the air flowing past you, you f can smell the stench of rotting corpses. I can also see rotting corpses, at least one. Uh, you can see a rotting corpse. Yeah. Can you? All the way in the back here. Oh, uh, interestingly enough, that's not a rotting corpse. That, that is a skeleton. Oh, that's a full fledged skeleton. <laughs> Le legs, 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 it's like post initiative, actually. Wow. Yeah, bro. Yeah. No, I didn't realize. Yeah, no. This, this initiative. So, no, there is a skeleton up there. That skeleton has no skull, is you? Uh, it's, I mean. <laughs> Right, I think this is definitely a good place to be in, so I'm going to just get a little bit further in. Road splits here. I don't think it's reasonable for me to go to the left. Um, my rope safety might not work this way. So I'm just. It's true, it may not work that way. I'm just going to move past this and go straight ahead. What's the glowing light? Okay, you progress step by fetid step towards this ominous light that's flickering in and out of existence, and the stench is getting worse. Oh god. And you are probably hearing a kind of whistling noise as well, as the airflow is twisting and, and melodorously turning. S has all signs off. Don't do this. So I'm going to stab in. You continue to tread forwards to this grossness, and uh, would you like to roll me a stealth check? That's good. Yeah, that's... An really eight. Good. An Love eight. You. Fantastic. Fantastic. Excellent. Good. Okay. Good. No, that's that's wonderful. <laughs> is it? <laughs> no. I think it is. Continue. You sure about that? Oh, yeah. I'm going to skimmy back to the right side. Ah, uh, now I see corpses. 
you do see corpses floating in this shimmering, glowing water. It's strange. There seems almost like there's a tunnel of gross, almost eldritch light spearing down from the ceiling, but the ceiling is solid here. This illumination shouldn't be here. And in fact, roll me a perception check. <laughs> oh God. Please roll me initiative. Do oh we boy. all need to roll initiative? Yes, we are now engaging in a combat encounter, so. Okay, good, good. So Ash has a 14 initiative. Let's let's see how this goes. Uh, how, how good are you or what you do? Oh my God, you're fucking terrible. I mean, it makes sense, but like you're fucking terrible. <laughs> As if you're in danger, just scream, please. I guess you're just unaware of some shit. Uh, Elijah, you know, you're not aware of anything out there. Everything seems fine. Svetlana, you're, yeah, things, seem, things seem decent. Ash, Ash, this is unfortunate. <laughs> Scared. You hear... Yeah... Do we all hear that, or just us? Oh, just Ash. Oh, just Ash indeed. Go. You hear the dripping watery noises of creatures leaving the water as you witness these entities walk forward you into walk towards you in the half light you know you're transfixed by this undulating light so you barely notice it as they walk up on you and uh, this hungry zombie is going to hit you or attempt to hit you i should say i am i am seeing everything because of dark vision. yes now you are aware of everything because someone is smacking ash in the face <laughs> And because of this situation, this specific attack will come under a surprise round, which means it gets advantage. Good luck. This might hurt. It does. That's a 12. You're 14. Okay, so with advantage, it misses. You're lucky on this occasion. <laughs> okay, well, Elijah, you hear growling sounds and the, the noises of combat and someone smacking Ash in the face or attempting to smack Ash in the face. Ash has no idea how bad it is, right? That's. Uh, I have an idea. Can you? Can, do you want to communicate that to us? Oh. Yeah, you, talking is a free action. Yeah, talking is a free action. Generally speaking, talking is a free action. In danger, oh. please. <laughs> okay, it's really bad. Damn, I feel like I've got some fun options, but I'm gonna go with the low, uh, the low cost one, and I'm gonna cast Mage Hand, and I'm gonna start clearing out, like you know, the space Ash wriggled through. Yeah. And, any any sort of loose rock I can get out of there to make this a much cleaner yank, I'm gonna do. That. Okay, so you're gonna try and avoid just just like uh, what's the word we're looking for? I don't. Uh, you don't want to cheese grate him. You try. You don't. You want to avoid the cheese grate. Okay. Yeah. Um. I know. I know what's about to happen because yeah. Nix is strong. So let's clear the way. You also have a background in like masonry and construction, if I'm not mistaken. True. Yeah. So that is I'm gonna let you automatically succeed on this. For other people, I may have asked for a, a, a role, but I'm gonna let you automatically simply handle this. Like you know, like oh, you like you can quickly identify like, that point, that point, and that point. That will fuck someone up if that pulled through here. Like I've seen this happen before with like worksite accidents. Right. We're just gonna. I'm basically a dwarf. I'm a, I'm a yeah. master mason. I'm basically a dwarf. You understand the 41 year old man back story <laughs> yeah you don't need to roll for this so you, you just like bam i've got this you've identified the problem zones uh you do your best to deal with them obviously using mage hat there's a limited amount of force you can apply with what you've got available you're gonna do that and also you're gonna direct like sarian where to like pull the rope high or low type things right you can be like you know pull low if it's if it's this or pull high if it's that to keep Keep them away from, you know, getting garroted. Uh, but I believe that's your complete action, Elijah. That, that is my complete action. Svetlana, if you would. Okay. Well, because I can't see anything, I think it might make sense. I, I recognize that um, Ash is in trouble because I can hear him. So I think I'm going to pick up one of the rocks, cast light on it, and throw it down the tunnel. Can I do that? Okay, so... 
I've also there's a couple there's a couple things you're trying to do there. Um, you're just talking about action economy. Um, so throwing something just to get it out there isn't an attack action, but it is you know quite laborious. You have an item interaction because you're trying to pick up a rock, right? Yeah. It's not something you've already got in hand, so that's an item interaction action to cast light, and then you don't really have actions to throw. Oh, right. That's the only consideration. I, I was just thinking, because I've got a bonus action that I could probably use as Shield of Faith, because I don't want to get down that tunnel and block Ash's path back. But since I can't see him, can I cast Shield of Faith, say, faith on him? Generally, you need to be able to identify a target to be able to do that. Um, what I would allow is if you want to use that, I would let you use your action for a perception check to, like, confirm the location of ash technically you need line of sight for this but i'm willing I'm, I'm willing to slide by the rules if you want to use the action all right so in that case i'll roll a perception seven is not going to be high enough to spot ash in the dark and confirm that so you right. you do have your bonus action i can't really and your movement cast, yeah i can't really cast the bonus action if i can't see it i should have thought about that yeah it is kind of a pain in the ass this is the this is the pain point uh, just, actually it's light no because you were using action for identifying stuff like i was, I was clear like it would have been a full action to be like very clear and confirmatory although i actually want to clarify something like you can't see ash even if you're using the cue to like hover around your token and make sure you're leaning side to side no no cue not not for like full movement because if you use cue and you can slide oh ash is literally just in the only dark spot <laughs> fantastic it's it's if they've been one square forward you could have seen them okay so okay in, in that case i don't think there's much more you can do yeah i can't you're, help you're kind of in a bad position we can see some baddies from where we're at but i mean moving slow isn't bad and the other option is like if if nick or if sarian isn't gonna pull you could cast light on a rock and hand it to her all right with it, yeah. the intent for her in turn to be like tossing it in there if we think she's not gonna pull him like that's the only other like kind of clever idea I had. If you wanted to stick to the light. Point. Well, the the thing was the offer of the perception check was like as an action you can make a perception check. Yeah. To confirm the location of Ash because like Ash is in the pitch black right now basically. I kind of made a bet on my rolling skills, which have been doing me well till now. That's well, okay. Oh, oh, and that means there's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Forget about it. That was that was the thing. So I think right. I think this made this just bad luck dice. You got you got screwed by the dice for once. All right. It, it happens. It happened at least once. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, Ash, it's your turn. Uh, I want to put my bow in one hand. Okay. Put the shield in the other one. Okay, so you have your bow in one hand and your shield in the other, which means your AC is currently 16. Is that... Excellent. And then I want to run away. Okay, you would be provoking an opportunity attack. Yes. Uh, do these... Yeah, these ones in particular get their full range of actions. They're not actually that slow. Um, okay, so one of them will make their opportunity attack. They will attempt to slam. They don't get any real advantages. They're not that great. However, they they hit you anyway, because I guess fuck you, right? Oh, so close. <laughs> That's brutal. That's absolutely brutal. Come on, hit me. Take it. Seven damage. I can take it. Oh, that's max damage as well. That's absolutely brutal. But you can now move the rest of your move freely. All right. Now, these are going to take like quadruple movement to get through. So for every like five foot, it's actually 20 foot of movement um, because you have to squeeze and it's difficult terrain. It's absolute hell to get through here. Here already? You can be there, certainly. You can be here. That's theoretically just 15. Where does it start? Does it start here? Does this count already or do I get one? Uh, yeah, so this is like it's it's about like a seven or eight foot passage. Which is, <laughs> uh, well, no, I'm saying it's a seven or eight foot passage, so you would need at least. It's really difficult to put you halfway through it. But yeah, to get through it, you'd probably need like two more turns. Yeah, Good. but so end up here. Yeah, that's where you would end up. All right, it's time to scream, pull. Uh, that's okay. That's enough of me. So, Sarin, it's your turn. Okay, so because we're in a very dangerous situation, I just, I just help him uh, by pulling the. Okay. Roll me, roll me a strength check. So you're going to get him some way down the passage, regardless. But you are trying to haul someone through a passage. There's a lot of difficult, there's a lot of difficult stuff to deal with. So a strength check is going to be like, you know, just how far do you get him to haul his ass down here? Damn. A seven is 
fine. Strength checks are generally really difficult to pull off regardless. So a seven is fine. I'm gonna actually say in this particular instance, like a seven, assuming you're moving back as part of it to, to give enough space for Ash to get through. I'm gonna say that gets Ash through. Oh my God, I'm alive. <laughs> but like that is that is the total sum of, of the movement permitted to you at this juncture. Ash, are you hurt? Oh my God, I am hurt. <laughs> God damn it, there are still zombies in there. Oh my god. We're in danger. Are you alright? There's strange light, there are floating bodies in there. There are zombies, they're after me, they're hungry. I hear they're green as well. I couldn't really tell. Uh, I'm not sure if we are safe here right now. Are they following us? Can you see? Uh, I cannot see. It is. Remember you can use... You remember, yeah, remember you can use Q to like... Yeah, they are still standing. And never get around. I have... Uh, I mean... Side on it. We're still in combat order, by the way, just just so you know. Yes. Yeah. In theory, they are, I guess, I guess this is, we, we're really, I'm asking lag, but I'm asking. We're, we're about to find out. Saren, I'm assuming that's your completion of your turn. Yeah. That'd be I, I should put these in, in the combat order. Okay. So the zombies are going to make a decision. You're over there. They're zombies. They don't really do much decision making, <laughs> but uh, you are. They just do. You're out of some perceptive range since there's no nothing here to eat and they return to where they came from and they're all basically on the same initiative because of where they are so we are we are in a position here where we are i'm gonna say we're in turn order for working stuff out but, but depending on your decisions we might not we might not remain in turn order does that make sense yeah it's all hinges on whether or not we want to stay <laughs> yeah like what are you what are your actions from here on out so do you guys want do you want to go exploring and kill some zombies, or do you guys just want to, like, move on? I think because of the way of moving around in there, those zombies could wind up doing a lot of damage before we all got in there to kill them. I think that's fair. It is a very narrow path indeed. There is something very suspicious going on there, but there is a side path, and we know that there is another opening to this cave, and it might just be connected, and this was <laughs> a bad decision. <laughs> Maybe not. We learned something either way. We definitely learned something. There is. We need. We need to figure out if this is connected, and if it's not connected, we need to come back. There is something here. Yeah. And I need somebody that can work out what kind of magic is going on now. I did. So I could. I apologize for interrupting you, Svetlana. Could you roll religion for me? Religion. Sorry, I don't know how to sing that. <laughs> <laughs> so since you're not immediately re-engaging here, I, I'm gonna call combat ended. I'm alive. Can I cast a uh, healing word on uh, Ash? You certainly can. Can I make a suggestion instead? Okay. It's usually better to short rest to regain HP out of combat. Generally, yes. From a metagame standpoint. I'm not saying you can't do it, and I'm not saying never do it, like as an advice either. I'm just saying, like, usually in this context, it's better for us to... to sit around for 10 minutes and let uh, Ash roll some hit dice, of which she has quite a few, than it is to take one of your spell slots for like 4 HP. One comment on that though is short rests are by raw one hour. One hour, my bad. But I'm going to cast Healing Word anyway. I am writing that down because I do think that's important. Thank you very much okay. for okay. telling that's me. Uh, also so about killing zombies, I'm happy with that. And um, because you know, people need some rest. And so I'm going to cast make them that rest forever. on Ash. Is that a 17 heal? No. Okay. Oops. No, I rolled a d20, but it came up on the set line because I had accidentally selected my bad. I think I accidentally pressed it twice. I'm not sure. Nope, you're good. Nope. All right. I'll take it. Plus three, plus three is nice. So your religion check allows you to identify that those are... Based on, like, you're having this discussion, like, oh, I saw this thing, and so on and so forth. You can identify that as almost certainly some undead creatures. You know that undead creatures are that, so especially, specifically these bloated, wet zombies. Uh, they are particularly resistant to bludgeoning damage because their flesh is kind of like a spongy, soft element to it. Like, it's just not that effective, right? It's like hitting a slime with a mace. It just kind of doesn't do anything. But as a counterpoint, uh, slashing and radiant damage are insanely effective. Radiant due to the fact that these are beasts of foul energy and the cleansing purifiers are incredibly powerful for us. And, and slashing, because of the aforementioned soft flesh, uh, you can just go straight through them with that stuff. The flame that would destroy these uh, dead boys. That's true. And you would know dead boys. <laughs> Based on your kind of understanding of like what you can perceive so far, that 
these undead creatures seem more like they're the kind of spontaneous existences because uh you know you've got some horrible shit going on there and they don't seem to be under the direct control of someone or at least you haven't identified someone because otherwise they would have probably tried to pursue you past the door if they begin in order to pursue you so you think these are probably more the spontaneous like they've come into occurrence because of something horrific in the world you don't know what that is that's kind of your understanding of the situation the group as i'm uh, go back. excellent much better thanks saloon i'm alive you're welcome. I mean, are you okay, though? I, I mean, uh, I've never actually encountered zombies. This is the first time for me. I, it's not my typical prey. Uh, well, it I'm... was definitely very disturbing. I know of zombies, but I have never actually seen them before. Yeah, yeah. I've no, no experience. That's that's beyond me. Um, as what do you what do you saw inside? What did you see inside the, uh, the cave? I, I saw some glowing light in there i saw some floating bodies in a pond um the glowing lights seemed to be coming from nowhere i couldn't really identify the source of it uh, i had a very uneasy feeling going in deeper and deeper it's very dark in there by the way <laughs> uh, there is a terrible stench in there i did identify one skeleton but the rest of the bodies that were floating in the water were all uh well Oh, that's scary. Uh, <laughs> they were all not. What's it called? Not digested. Oh. Not dead, no. They were still intact. Fleshy. Yeah, there was still some meat on them bones. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Can I yeah. suggest Let's... that I'm slightly worried? Um, any chance that we could not be directly near the entrance hall. Sure. Also, so smart. Hey, look, it's a goblin. <laughs> just, just <sorry. laughs> I, I, I was thinking the zombie's about to approach this one behind. <laughs> I'm sorry, boys and girls. This motherfucker rolled a 21 on a stealth roll. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm like, I'm out here like, bro, where's my burb at? <laughs> like, your burb, nice. your burb, I respect, right? Your burb was doing his job. He was looking down, but man rolled a 21 on his stealth check. Yeah. Uh, that dis that decidedly beats, I think, everyone's passive stealth. Yeah. Did you call your bird Rookie D? No, we haven't decided on a name yet. <laughs> oh, I wrote that down in my notes. <laughs> I don't really want to Amazing, that. I love it. No. Okay, so... Speaking into existence. Uh, we have we have a situation here. Uh, a goblin and their escort dog has occurred, and they have surprised you. Uh, we have to roll initiative. Oh, he hasn't rolled well on the initiative though. Are we still rolling normal initiative? <laughs> Where's all my good dash rolls gone? <laughs> okay, excellent. But we looked. <laughs> so, well. Elijah, you're surprised. <laughs> That's your turn is becoming unsurprised. So you're no longer surprised, which is fantastic because that means he won't get advantage if he chooses to attack you, which I think is a good thing. Like not being a uh, flat footed. I've yeah. 20 months yeah. last night. Flat yeah. footed. <laughs> flat footed sucks. The pessimistic goblin poker. Uh, he is oh, now if I remember correctly. Yes. OK, this is uh, I'm, I'm an evil bastard of a DM, uh, but you know, it's fantastic. Uh, Sarian, Sarian, uh, your boy is going to take a one step forwards. And then he's going to yeet a spear at Sarian with advantage. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is cruel. This is unusual. This goblin is 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 going to crit you, uh, Sarian. Doing eight damage. OK, OK, that's not too bad for a crit. That's that's really not bad at all. OK, so this goblin takes one step forward from its like ambush position, yeets this spear at you, it impales into like through your like bicep, right? Like it skims under the armor, like slashing into the bicep as as it goes through j just between the plates. Uh, and then it's going to uh, move away. It has thrown its spear. So luckily you gained a level, which means that 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 hurts, but it's not it's not death. Um, it's run like a pussy. Yeah, yeah. He he threw his spear at you, hit you, created you, and is now leaving. That seems to be his plan of action. What the fuck? Ash, uh, you're up. Except you were surprised, so 
that's your turn. You are no longer surprised. Ah, oh, thank you. Now it's the wild dog's turn. The wild dog's going to charge, and it's going to go for the one that's that's bloodied. I feel like such a bastard, but this is the best target like that it can see. What's this dog humble? It doesn't think it's better than you. That's oh. that's the situation. Enough. It's it's just it's a cool dog. Now it doesn't get pack tactics. So it's going to roll with advantage because Sarian hasn't taken a turn yet. It gets a 14. That's less than your AC. The dog misses. It, it tries to clamp onto your arm and it's just like nothing's happening because you're high quality armor. Sarian, you are no longer surprised. Svetlana, you are no longer surprised. Elijah, your turn is up. Hi, doggy. All right. So no. from my perspective, we've got a goblin poker dude and a dog. I haven't seen anything else. Poker guy seems spookier, and we have people who bash stuff in the face, so... I would note that the from your perception, that goblin poker is running as fast as they can. Okay, good to note. Like, they don't seem to want to be hanging around here. They also don't have a weapon anymore. They've thrown it at Sarian. They threw the weapon and ran away. That was their action. Gotcha. It's paused. But I would like to move south. My apologies. You're good. It's unpaused. One of these days I remember that. Uh, now, I know it's a bit hard to tell, but if you're in like deep areas like this, this is going to be difficult terrain to maneuver through. To not go too far. Yeah. I think I actually went 25 and not 30. Yeah, I mean, you're good. Uh, I'm just kind of like, okay. like th it's not really going to affect you because you're just going to go through this area and it's going to be fine. But like when you're in these deep clusters, that's going to be difficult terrain. Okay, that's good to note. Thank you. All right, let's 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 just... Let's just firebolt him. Like, Frostbite doesn't slow you down, and it does less damage, so... Boom. Old Reliable, baby. This is the Goblin Poker for chat, by the way. Damn. That's a nine. That unfortunate. Uh, the Pessimistic Goblin Poker is... is a good... I assume you don't have any more actions, so I apologize if you did. No, no, that's it. Good. Uh, they're gonna continue running, and they're gonna get to about here. I, I guess I would use my bonus action. Yeah, that seems good. ...the bird to try to follow him. Okay. Okay, so the bird's gonna track them. Would, yeah. And then keep you up. Okay, so you're you're gonna get an idea of where they are if they move out of your visual line of sight. I think you can see them just fine right now, though. I'm fairly sure you can. I, I can currently see them, but if they were Could, out of yeah, yeah. sight, I would like to know which direction they went. Excellent. Excellent. Understood. So we, we made nice and clear to you. Uh, okay, which means, Ash, it's your turn. turn. You guys get the dog. I'll try to take Goblin Poker. He's trying to run away. Go to down here. Stick right. That's right. You cannot end your turn on uh, Ally Square. He's sitting there. Yeah, there's a, du there's a dude right there. There's a whole there's a whole ass man just. Yeah, I don't see him. It's me. I'm tree. fat. I can go here, right? I was thirty. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that should be good. Right. Um, then I need to do some equipment management. I'm going to unequip my shield and put my longbow back into hands. Excellent. And shoot this running bastard okay roll it i'm hoping i'm hoping you hit oh it's a big hit okay roll damage roll damage it's probably going to be enough oh ho, 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 ho. it's good after that disaster so you just like you move up you line it up thum, straight in the back of the neck he falls forward instantly dead got him no reinforcements for you bro you're one level away from me good. knock him down in that scenario if he doesn't die it's beautiful i was like damn he can knock him down and i was like oh fuck, not yet <laughs> so the humble wild the hot the humble wild dog is uh, i mean it's gonna cheat, keep trying to eat sarian honestly it's it's ready for this it, it it's just normal attacks now also sarian looks tasty it's a miss sarian sarian's just doggy. tanky doggy. all right sarian there's a dog attacking you uh what do you want to do with it nothing uh nothing okay svetlana it's your turn <laughs> to hit that dog again okay um there's some way i can be a friend of the doggy you could try animal handling, but it would be number one, it would be with disadvantage. And number two, this is going to be extremely difficult, right? Like it, it doesn't currently have a master giving it instructions, so it would just be against its own nature. But its own nature has trained it to hate everything that isn't a goblin. So I will do it. I mean, you agree. It's close enough. For a goblin. It's a seven. It's not good enough. Like you're, you're really needing, uh, you're really needing like 18 plus That's to, to make progress on that. Can try to bite me forever. I'm not going to hurt this doggy. Okay. It's fine. We can be friends. When he's just like, you know, tired, we can be friends. Okay. When that's, you're going to wait until they get tired. You're going to wait until the, okay, good. Uh, <laughs> fantastic. I see um, Tyrion's extreme determination here. I also see that the wild dog only wants to seem to want to eat her because she's bleeding. I've got animal handling. <laughs> 
Oh my god, please, no. I mean, you can do it. You can do it. You can try. I, I'm not going to stop you trying. All new players do this. You knew this was going to happen, lag. It's true. It's true. I don't. I should have. Right. I should have made something grosser. Okay, so you would have to get in melee range, just as an FYI. So you'd have to actually be over there. Yeah, I, I didn't think it was going to work. I'm, I'm going to be there. Oh no! You you have to be in melee range to handle this animal. That's how ha animal handling works. You can't be next to Sari, and you need to be base to base contact in threat range. I can't see it. Okay. Uh, it is it is it is under this tree. But she can she gonna stay here, I think. Yeah, like uh, these sides would be fine. Yeah. This check should be like 25. I'm just saying, it's a difficult chess. It's a difficult chess. <laughs> right, Jamin, what the fuck? <laughs> I promised once, um, El Elia, what's the name, right? Elia, that if you hit the dog, there is no way, there's no way in the world that you are going to be. Mm, I don't know, I'm going to be very angry, okay? Don't hit the doggy. I, I won't hit the dog. <laughs> don't be over it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to get the dog. Don't hit the doggy. No. At least, at least let me try something, but don't hit the doggy. Okay. okay. I just... My turn. Yeah, it is, it is uh, Elijah's turn. I would like to say to Sarian, though, you have an aware and... You, you are... You've, tra you've trained as a fighter. You have an awareness of how some combat works you know you're making some noise out here and that every time you spend making noise is a risk that you're letting some goblins prepare to ambush you depending on where you go it's fine i can't kill the goblins okay i mean i'm just i'm just pointing out as information your character knows <laughs> um, <laughs> all right elisha you're up yeah i guess i'm not gonna i will just move my 30 feet and uh i don't know i'll i'll make a stealth check Ugh. Okay. Try and hide in in the forest. Yeah, you got you got some bushes here that you can work with. What 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 lag just explained? <laughs> <laughs> I guess actually instead of that, what I would like to do is I would like to ready a firebolt for any goblins that okay, uh, excellent. See, come out of that cave. So the sun comes out that cave. Fumph is what's going to happen yeah. to it. Yeah, explosion. Got it. In the words of Mew okay. from Tales of the Abyss. Fire. Uh, might not might not happen for a little bit, but you're ready, right? You're just, you're ready. I don't know what's going on. Ash, you're up. I would laugh if Ash just walks over and puts an arrow in the dog like, fuck it. I... No. I, I no. did consider this multiple times. No. Oh dear. Hmm. That was it. Oh, hmm. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? Hi. Siren. Siren. Hi. Siren. This dog is biting you. A what? It's biting you. Put it out it's of its misery. It's not biting me. He it, it didn't even touch me. How much time has to pass until you give up? Uh... Forever? All right. You know what happens before. I don't want this situation again. I guess I moved 15 feet, right? I was here. Uh, it seems reasonable. Yeah, I can dash, right, after this? Uh, yeah, I mean, you could just continue moving if you want. Oh, I can just continue moving. Yeah, you, you, have an, you have a movement allotment. All right, so you move back, and the dog takes this opportunity to attack against you, because you're moving out of its threatened area. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, let's go. Let's, yeah, let's fucking go. All right, it's a 10. doesn't hit you. doesn't hit me. See, it tries to bite me as well. Stop the dog. Bad dog. Uh, I'm going to... Stop crying, please. I can, I can run still, right? Now I can run. Yeah, now if you want to, you can take the dash action. Yeah, let's... And then you get another 30 foot movement. Get over here. Okay. If this Good. doesn't slow me down here. Yeah. Good, yeah, that, that's fine. Um, if you're wanting to try and do some stealth stuff, you probably want to be standing on this side so you get like cover from these bushes that you can make use of. Yeah. If you want to do that next turn. Yeah, yeah let's go here. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. I have, don't have clear sight. I need to be here. Okay. And that's fair and reasonable. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, sorry. I ended the turn for you. Don't worry about it. It was, it was my error. Uh, Sarian, nom 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 goes the doggy. Several attacks at this point, unsuccessfully. Fine. Sarian, you're up. Okay, I'm going to try it again. Can I? You can, but like your chances of success are getting vanishingly small the more this fight goes on. Okay. Just one more time, okay? Disadvantage. Absolutely. Yeah, disadvantage. A 10 is better, but it's not enough. It's definitely not enough. All right, Svetlana. Can I use inspiration on Svetlana so she can use animal hunting again? You could absolutely do that, and that would take it from a disadvantaged role to a neutral role. Oh, is this unbound? I thought she has like normal. No, no, you like this is a very difficult thing to do, so everyone gets disadvantage for animal handling here. Okay, I will do it anyway. Okay, so your intention is to give inspiration if Svetlana is trying to use animal handling to pacify this dog. Yeah. 
She doesn't have to, but see if she if she did that, I'm going to use the inspiration. You're going to give me your inspiration, then I will use the animal handling. Okay. So <laughs> this takes it from disadvantage to neutral because you have both advantage and disadvantage. This is a neutral roll. Yes! God damn. Yes! What the fuck? Yes! I knew it was going Leg. to happen. Yes! Leg. This always happens. <laughs> yes! <It's destined. laughs> Fantastic. Yes! Okay. Doggy, doggy. So, what has just occurred here is that I gave this a chance of working, a very slim chance to do this. And I wasn't expecting it to work, right? <laughs> And so they spent all their resources in like four fucking attempts on this and they have now pacified this dog. So th this dog is it's still not like happy about this situation, but you've you've kind of like grabbed it by the scruff of the neck and you, you're like, you know, you, you've given it firm instruction and it's kind of looking back and forth and it's like, okay, like I tried biting you for a while and that that's my toolbox gone. And it's just kind of searching back and forth between you two and being like, okay, uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. I want to try and bite some shit, but I ain't seeing anything to bite right now. Like this, my, my mouth hurts. I mean, it's not it's not saying that, but you've got enough animal handling skill to know that that's what's going through its head right now. So, chop this dog out a little bit. I am noticing that Eli is getting into some position. So I'm thinking that something's about to happen and I'm also trying to calm the dog down. Okay. Well, I mean, you've used your action. Yeah. Can I give some food to the little doggy? I can be a friend of the doggy. I mean, Svetlana is the dog friend right now. Svetlana is the one with the skills to pay the bills. Like, you haven't been irritating it much, but you, you haven't been doing much to make friends with it. Like, right now, Svetlana has put that assertive dog body language and been like, nah, nah, back the fuck down. And the dog's like, yeah, I'm backing down, I'm backing down. I, I don't know what you want me to do here. All right, we're, and if we're gonna... I give him some food, maybe it's going to be nicer. Or it might be very confused. You don't know. You're not an expert dog handler, unlike... Apparently Svetlana. <laughs> <laughs> I I will agree that she can give the dog some food. Okay, okay. But we're in combat order, so that'll have to happen on their turn. Elijah, I'm assuming you're remaining ready, maybe stealth, you know, stealth ready action type shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll roll the stealth roll so we've got it. Uh also, if I try to give him some food and he tried to bite me, it's okay, he's not going to hurt me. Right, right, absolutely. Uh, Ash wanted to try and stealth. You, you could you could try and move up to here potentially. Uh, wait and get some sneaking done. Uh, j just here by this tree trunk. All right. Because you like take partial cover behind the tree. Yeah, and then I get but, to use stealth. Yeah, you'll make your you make a, hi a hide roll to get sneaky. So that's generally uh, an action, but you know you, you're kind of doing things on all turns. So I know what Elijah's doing. He's handling some stuff. You're trying to hide out here. I get it. You chill. So roll me stealth check. It's 15. Okay, so we got 14 and 15 up there. Uh, so the hover wild dog, as said, it's looking between you. It's confused. It doesn't know what to do. Sarian, you're up. Um, are we still in combat? No. We are still in combat. You are aware that there are probably goblins that are about to come out of this cave and try and fucking murder you, potentially. Like, this is a time critical moment and you are currently trying to manhandle this dog to like you. I have priorities, okay? Yeah, no, I've, I, I've noticed those priorities. Uh, they just don't necessarily align with you surviving. That's what I'm saying. May I make a slight suggestion? We could use the rope to tie the dog to a tree while we engage with whatever goblin might be around us and then come back to him later. Okay. I mean, the other end of the rope is still wrapped around Ash. Oh. Is still on us? So you better not tie <laughs> us together. I mean, it was kind of you got you got you got a spear thrown at you guys, so you kind of distracted about that situation. Like you had a brief conversation, then someone threw a spear at Sarian, and some shit happened. Do I have any rope? Potentially, I don't know. Do you have rope in your inventory? I have rope. I I, I can give uh, rope to uh, Sirian, oh. so she, well, I could tie the dog actually on my turn. I think I have. Wait. You think? Tying the dog to the tree will make it like him I, I think it'll keep it out of the way while we fight everybody else. Good point. That's acceptable then, I guess. Okay, so you're waiting for Svetlana to tie the dog, correct? Yes. Okay, Svetlana. Um, well, okay, that's one. Uh, unless you have an action that you wish to perform, Sarian? No, because I think it's going to be better if I wait for uh, if I wait right. for Svetlana to team with the doggy. Because if I do that, then uh, maybe the doggy is going to be angry at me and I want... Oh yeah, almost certainly. Almost certainly. Friend, you friend of the doggy. Technically, one thing you can do, Sarian, or I guess this is a Nyx, this is out of character, 
action is you can ready an action. That's what um, I'm doing and what Kron is doing. And so what you could do is you could say like, I want to feed the dog after Svetlana has tied him up. So you don't like this matters more in a battle that's long, like that's complicated, right? But right. the reason that matters is like, it means you don't waste your turn waiting. You're like delaying your turn until something happens and then you get to go and then you get your next turn. Okay, I like that idea. Okay, so feed after it's tied up. Okay, so Lana, action. What are you? What are you trying to do? You trying to tie up? Could try tie it up. I'm trying to tie the dog up to a tree so that I can get into a good position. If okay. Gumballians come in. So obviously this dog isn't friendly yet. It's not currently attacking you, but it's not friendly. So I think this is another animal handling role. How much lower difficulty, and it doesn't have disadvantage with it. So it's just a flat check, and you get a fifteen because of course you do. Of course you. Of course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> you get a 15 are uh, you successfully tie the dog up in such a way that it is not going to immediately escape it gnaws at the rope a bit it doesn't like the rope i'm a little bit molding widget but um, i mean i'm not actually molding this is this is what a gm does right because if you don't complain about shit that your players do they don't know that they're doing a good job <laughs> so you've tied the dog to a tree that is like this this dog is is now under the effects of uh restraint whichever one that one is i can't remember where it is uh now i'm going to give the dog some food you give the dog some food it seems uncomfortable at the idea of eating while you're watching it though no i just give i just give that and, and close my eyes it's fine you close your eyes uh, no i mean no i look to the other way it's fine okay well, in that case, the dog is going to look at Svetlana and then look at the food and then kind of wait uncomfortably. I'm just going to nod and sort of like encourage the dog to take the food from her. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, no, the dog... Oh, the dog still looks... I think I think at this point the dog would actually just be too uncomfortable and stressed right now to All right. to be dealing with food. Uh, I okay. pat my hand against no, the no, top it, half it, of the... Um, uh, Syrian's back where I can reach and say, maybe we'll come back to him in a little bit. Okay, just leave the food there and then we yeah. continue with our life. Yeah. Okay, good, good. And then Spend one ration or something. I don't know what I have to do. Or is that? I'm a, so I don't track rations and stuff. I assume you just have snacks and small stuff on, oh. on your character. So I'm, I, like, I'm, I'm not like super tracking that stuff. Okay. The same with ammunition. It's too much like hard work to care about it. Okay, so we're going to end the combat here. Because as Svetlana and Sarian rejoin you, you do note, Elijah and Ash, that nobody seems to be arriving to fuck with you. Huh. It's probably good that we uh, killed that guy. Yeah, I think so too. That's de he was definitely bad. Uh, I think if he get got away. I actually thought that one dog was the dog that we got let get away. Uh, it was not. This is a different dog. The previous dog seems to have run away somewhere else. It's a good thing. Can we untie this rope, please? <laughs> I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, that, that, sound, that sounds smart. Mine, not the dog ones. Check everybody up. Uh, anybody hurt? Uh, I'm feeling fine after the heal and this whole disaster. Okay. Can I look stressed? Syrian? <laughs> Please. I, I know, but it's not optimal. You might want to consider getting like some kind of healing kit or something to yeah. uh, heal off, off turn because you seem to enjoy topping people off. Do you want to take care of your dog or should we maybe actually investigate the cave? You know, do what we're here for? Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. So I mean, you, I know you are agreeing. I'm more concerned about um, yeah. the other half. <laughs> Fair. I think it's better if we investigate the cave without the doggy. I don't want anything bad happens to the doggy. And I think there is fine. We have some food. Maybe you go it towards not... the cave and I'll take care of the dog. Could be a good idea. I don't trust you. Why wouldn't I, you trust me? Th that's a really mean thing to say, just because he's an elf. <laughs> no, no, that isn't the problem. I'm half elf. The problem is that I think, you know, they don't want the doggy. They also... Yeah, now not... that you're calling me out, I actually feel bad for even thinking that. All right, maybe I shouldn't take care of the dog. Leave the dog there, okay? The dog is going to do nothing. All right, all right. And I'll we should be dog. together in the cave because it seems to be very dangerous. I think it's yeah. still smart to watch it. If you care about it, I'll guess watching it is not a bad idea. The dog is going to be fine without you. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, I if you think so. And let's all go and carefully. Yeah, I feel like I should go in cave. 
first. Yeah. Just because just if move. Anything... Okay, move. I'm gonna <laughs> stop. Uh, I don't want it to hit anybody else but me. I feel like I'm b being pushed by a half orc. Yeah. And remember, Excellent. I still have Excellent. rope. Do we want to check the body at all? Sure. If you're curious about it. Uh, can I just do a perception to see if there's anything to notice about it? Like, yeah, if you want to do a perception check to see if there's anything additionally useful, again, those hot rolls. Um, Jeez. Why <laughs> never in battle? <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you if you don't need good rolls in battle, you get good rolls at everything else, you're fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it is as the goblins before you've seen. Uh, this one perhaps even slightly more emaciated, but like not by much. Ah. But it is otherwise similar. Not a whole lot more information. Also, before we round this corner, would we like to take a break? Do we think that's a good idea? Yosh. Excellent. In that case, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back in a few minutes. And then when we come back, we're going to round this corner and find out what the hell's going on in here. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are ready to enter this cave. Uh, we were just having a brief off-screen off, off discussion about the various mechanics of non-lethal damage. Okay, so ladies, my party, people of the, of the free company, there is a cave entrance ahead of you. And if you guys would like to roll some perception checks, uh, we, can, we can ascertain what's ahead of us. Okay. Someone trying to get in that last trivia question, like... I'm, I'm assuming that the bird is... Telling the bird to go in the cave is kind of mean, but uh, I can ask it to get a glimpse, like a quick early one, and then tell it to guard the door. You could... Uh, first thing, see first. Uh, you know, it's very dark. It's very dark inside the cave. There doesn't appear to be any natural light, apart from the light flowing in from the forward position. With it's light on something. You absolutely can. Whatever you'd like to cast light on, you can cast light on. Just pick up a rock. I do or see a goblin from this position. I'm gonna pause you there then. Chris, oh boy. Is someone standing on Ash? I'm a standing ah, eyes. <laughs> <laughs> we must have moved at the same time, okay? I'm not trying to hug. Stop standing on him. Not just know your place, elf. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think he's. I think the issue is that he doesn't know your place. That's that's the issue that we're. <laughs> yeah, typical elf behavior. Only yeah. so, so self-absorbed doesn't even notice where everyone else is. So okay, that's... you're going to cast light. What are you casting light on, Svetlana? While you work that out, I'm going to say what's um, going on in the cave. Of those that can see into the dark, you don't see much. Apart from I think Ash was was scooching too far forwards. Uh, you notice apart from what Ash sneak peek that you can't hear very much from the cave at all which considering that you're expecting goblins in here and perhaps you can even see them suggests that they're deliberately being very quiet because goblins are normally quite noisy if goblins are normally quite noisy and this is very quiet ahead of you that seems like they might have something planned this way but your collective perception rolls were kind of kind of shit so you don't know what you just know it's quiet it's too quiet Strangely quiet. Yeah. That is the information you get. What What are your actions? Also, Svetlana, light. What are you casting on? Yourself? A token? I'm casting it on a bit of rock. On a bit of rock? I've got in my hand. You've got in your hand. Uh, Fantastic. Uh, I'll give you a light source, which I think is 40-20. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, we're, go we're going to go with that one. Beautiful. I like I like this one. Ooh. Shiny. It's a very shiny rock. I, I could throw the rock in there. Please don't throw the rock, otherwise I have to add it to a separate token. <laughs> but, um... Ash can already see down there. Yeah, Seren should be see as well. Yeah, so I'm going to trust that he would let us know if there was goblin running towards well, us. Well, I did say it. I can see a goblin. <laughs> oh, yes. I can see one. You can see a goblin. We, right. You, you, can, you, can, you can see some bullshit, because I hate you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you are aware there are goblins in this cave, and they're being very quiet, and they don't know that you know that they don't know that people know that there's goblins. This is a trepidatious moment. They're, they seem to be waiting for you to cross the threshold to do something. Yes, we should be careful. There are barricades inside the like cave. you should throw the rock. <laughs> I mm. should either throw the rock or let me initiate and see what comes out. Look, I, I mean, look, e either the, the more efficient version you still don't like, which is touch one of the arrows in Ash's quiver and do the same thing. <laughs> It's fine, it's fine. I can deal with it. I can deal with it. So cool. I won't throw a fireball down, burn them all. What was that, Nyx? Light. You have light? The, the fireball. You can yeah. throw, you can Fi use fireball. You can burn everything and everyone is dead. Yeah, very And you can also see. No, I cannot. My fireball very specifically is not allowed to do certain things like that because there are other spells 
that are at the same level that do the things you're talking about, like light stuff and like create actual bonfires and things. Yeah. So really only for attacking. Firebolt could start a fire if it was on something specifically flammable because it does fire damage. So if it was attacking a barrel of oil, that could start a detonation or a conflagration. But if it's just attacking like some wood, that's not going to start a fire. It's kind of like holding a lighter up against a bench or something. Like if you stand there for 10 minutes, you might get it to start on fire, but it's going to take a while. And there's nothing immediately flammable in there. Actually what I am good at, it's just a good way of hurting people. Much better at building walls. Just like in my past life. I'm actually liking that idea of casting light on one of Ash's arrows. You can do it. I'll, I'll hate you, but I'll, I'll make it happen. <laughs> he says he'll hate you, but he loves you. And I do gonna, love you. Not stop loving you. This is just me complaining as a GM. Yeah, yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's really absolutely cool. fine. Make a new token for a light source, but the deal is if you're going to put us in the dark and we've got two humans, yeah, no, I start doing this shit. I absolutely understand. I'm not going to be upset by it. Like, I'm just, I'm talking shit because as a GM, half of my job is talking shit and lying to you as players. <laughs> if you want to light an arrow up, we can do that. Do it. Okay. All right, do it. Okay, so you cast light on an arrow and you fire into the cave. Where, Ash, where are you putting this arrow? You could, I'm going to let you move here, but only for a little bit of movement because the moment you fire an arrow into there, some shit's going to happen. Yeah, I need Elijah to scoot over. I need that position. Okay, so use X to mark where you want the arrow. If you embed it in someone, it's not going to provide you light because it's going to be embedded in someone. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's the issue. That's the issue. All right, go with here. Okay, I mean that's that's the side of a rock. I mean, you, you could, if you wanted to, you could land it on the floor, like over here somewhere, or land it in these bags. Lucky concerned that there's something hiding behind this pillar. Okay, certainly. Okay, so pointer again, because like X. like a wooden barricade. Yeah. Okay. There are multiple wooden barricades like, here. What if you what if you yeah. shot it like into yeah. this one or like this one, like right that it should stick or get caught in it or land, you know what I mean, or like bounce off of it. As well, yeah, let's go with this one then. It's fine. We can see okay. around here, hopefully, and see if a light source, yeah. a light source has been produced here. Ray. Well, <laughs> we see nothing new. Oh no. We don't. Well, you see maybe something, but you don't see the goblin. He was kind of wondering why you're going for that. It doesn't. Well, I'm still. The light source doesn't. Something hiding behind there that I cannot see. Literally cannot see. Well, yeah, but like you, you could have put the light source like deeper in the thing and got the light to reflect backwards behind the pillar and then maybe seen some stuff. But you know, that's all good. That's all well and good. It's fine. It's fine. Light source is over there now. It is. All right, we got we we Every mission couple. accomplished. Okay, mission accomplished. <laughs> right. 100%. So, we're going to start some shit. You were aware there were goblins in here. They are now aware that you're aware that they're aware. So shit's, shit's happening. And you hear the sounds of a very authoritative voice in a goblin language making a very clear declarative statement. Uh, when, once the arrow is loosed into the room. You don't know the language unless you speak goblin or, or have reason to do so. I don't think you do. But that indicates that there is some shit going on in here with some some instructiveness so please roll your initiatives yes please also just as an fyi to the barricades because you can see them traveling over these one way will cause you damage unless you make an acrobatics check okay. traveling over them from the out from the inside out will not cause you damage and does not require an acrobatics check yeah makes sense okay remember don't kill the novels um, uh, yeah, that can be a personal choice. Good luck with that. I feel that I have done my duty to save a dog. Yes, you have saved. Guilt is starting to reside. You have saved a dog, which is great because I you... can try to intimidate the doggies, or I don't know, throw a stick on their one to run. Remember, we were talking about non-lethal damage. So oh yeah, you can punch them in the face. Just, just beat them with the blunt, with the, with the. Oh, this is actually just in range. And then maybe, then maybe you will be able to intimidate another one. You know. Okay. Svetlana, dog charges out of here after uh, he, like barking orders from the the inner of the cave. Dog charges out and is is leased upon you. Rolls an eight. It sucks. You're, you're half orcs, half orcs. <laughs> you know, like, it's not gonna do anything to me with an eight. You're gonna you're gonna beat one of them and then roar at the other one and scare it off. Like so get mad. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna pretty much bounce off me. Okay, so this guy is like not not quite on the barricade. He's like he's like standing kind of like one foot on the barricade. Right, uh, and they are going to. Oh, Svetlana. Mm. Okay, you're just out of range. So, uh, Elijah, this is going towards you. Sweet. This goblin poker is going to sling this spear. Now it is just out of range, so it is taking disadvantage. It's a five. Nice. Good. I do have an AC of at least six. 
Oh. Now, <laughs> these goblins, having had time to prepare, have taken multiple spears into their possession, which means they're not immediately disarmed. Right. I mean, they're shit spears, but they, they've got them. Dog is going to charge down to here. Elijah, you're up. I think I'm just going to keep waiting. I'm going to spread out a little bit, maybe like move this way just to sort of... I'm not 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 be totally grouped up and I will I will just fire both the guy close to us. Excellent. The girl's safe. So you were this is the wild dog you were hitting? Yes. No. Excellent. Oh, actually, okay, fine. I will attack the goblin. Just to avoid okay, the, well, the wrath here. The goblin is gonna have two plus two AC because he's using the barricade as cover. That's fine. I will it I I'm going You'll to take the same attack even if it's suboptimal. Okay. Uh, so you are sixteen still hits because you're your fucking monster. Even with the plus two AC it gets for like partial cover. So you do three damage with your fireball. Great damage. <laughs> Great damage. <laughs> 1d10. I it's it's just me and you have hundred spirits over here. Yeah. Like, yeah. Rolling that 1d10 is feel good, man. 1d12, 1d10. Love that stuff. Yeah. You, you either do fantastic or you don't. Like, oh, you really don't. All right, Svetlana, you're up. There's a dog in front of you. There is a goblin on the barricade. He is bloodied. He having been burnt up quite severely. All right. All right. That goblin i think has got more potential to do damage but at the same time i don't want something to get around on her eli and ash i'm really really sorry about this syrian but i'm gone oh dear for fat duck we talked about oh, the we, mace oh mace thank you it's a spiked mace it is a spiked mace no it's like, fine <laughs> Stop uh, me damage, leave. don't worry about it. <laughs> no, Kim, do anything now. Mm, I mean, <laughs> which, like, <laughs> my, my guilt could only last I'm for so long. I'm not talking about saving. <laughs> That's a hit. I'm about living alone. That's a hit. No. No. Roll damage. Uh, it's gonna survive. <laughs> it might... Oh, it's not. It's not. Oh, oh, oh right. What? <laughs> No. It's it's. I'm, I'm stuck. You, you've killed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you killed it. You did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I feel guilty again. Oh dear. <laughs> Spike. This is terrible. This is awful. Not a non-lethal weapon. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna write that down. I mean. You could acquire a non-spiked mace if you so chose, but I, I asked if it was a spiked mace because I wanted you to tell me whether it was a spiked mace or not. And you said it was a spiked mace. I, mm, it, it, it literally says spiked inside the description, so I was going with that. Fair. That's, that's fair. To protect you or you are just a bunch of murder people. I'm sorry. I mean, Says the person who was like, I wish to eat a child. <laughs> I can't. I wish to consume the child. <laughs> <laughs> the bones are the most tastiest part. I, I Shut up, Pascal! I'm gonna <laughs> stay to honest, some soup with you. <laughs> to be honest, I don't, I don't blame her for thinking dogs are better than humans. Like that's the, that's uh, fair and reasonable. Yeah. That today. Yeah, that's like it's, it's, it's true. It's true. All right, Svetlana, um, you do have your movement available if you want to move up. I, I'm going to move up, actually. I'm going to get myself a little bit more into that doorway. Try and create some area where they can't run past me. To so, one, one point of consideration is, obviously, they can jump these barricades this way, but if you want to get around without using acrobatics, you're going to have to go all the way around, which is going to suck, right? I have Sacred Flame. Oh, yeah, but... I'm not gonna go around. Or I'm not gonna climb over. I'm gonna go around, but they're gonna suffer. Yes, I love it. <laughs> uh, my my point was more that depending on what you want to barricade, standing here might actually barricade the party better. Uh, yeah. Because then they have to come this way and down, and that takes longer. I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna stand there. Yeah. Because you have a threatened area like all around you, and they would have to run around and then leave it. To trigger yeah and obviously they can't move through your square so it's kind of a pain for them all right the grieving goblin poker is is gonna move up that's maybe nyx can save enough dogs to like pull a sled or something oh this one's kind of you know it can move through an allied square but i'm gonna say okay so this goblin can get here but because of this like clusterfuck going on here i'm gonna say you get an opportunity attack just for it moving here because of the fact that you've moved up here is creating like so it, it can it can move here by the map 
design. But because of the clusterfuck choke point that you've created by standing here, you're basically barricading it from moving safely. So I'm giving you a free opportunity attack if you want to use a reaction to smack this guy yeah. as he tries to get into position there. Oh yeah, I'm wondering whether this is a mace or sacred flame. Mace only because it is a melee, like it's an opportunity attack that traditionally can only be done by melee weapons unless you have special stuff. All right, I'm going to do that. Okay, that's a 21 to hit. That is a hit. Would you like to roll some damage? Are you going to kill this goblin? Okay. Rookie can't cast a spell as a reaction <laughs> here. Ah, uh, it, it, it just makes me so bad. <laughs> this guy like clambers over the thing and then just thunk, head impaled into the pillar behind it. Mace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you get him on the backswing. You get him on the backswing, just thunk. Uh, smashing them into the pillar and they just crumple on the ground like goblin brains and guts that's for squishing dog. <laughs> that's for making me kill your dog what the fuck <laughs> okay uh ash you're up <laughs> all right i'm gonna make you've done what i missed earlier and uh wrong button and attack this guy that not everybody can see be reasonable enough right uh yes yeah, so you're attacking one of the hullers up there uh, yeah, okay, good. Sure one. Excellent. So, you are... This is a very congested path, and they're behind a barricade, so they're actually going to get quite a lot of cover. So they're going to have more AC than they would normally have because of the position that they're in. This is kind of a difficult attack to make. Fair enough, but I don't get disadvantage. You do not get disadvantage. They have cover. For some reason, cover is the only thing that works this way and is a static bonus penalty rather than being advantage disadvantage but i'll complain about 5e later wanted to have different levels of cover i think like, that's the only reason why right yeah pretty much but yeah so it's congested you can make the attack that target will have more ac it, you don't give a shit would you like to roll some damage cool okay fantastic you just peg this guy in the head good it's beautiful yeah. uh they haven't even got an action yeah you just peg them like funk through the darkness like weaving this between like Svetlana a rock pillar and the other goblin just threading the needle thunk straight through the center drops dead what I'm here for all right I use my movement oh yeah you can use your movement I apologize for skipping on that I want to stand over here okay excellent there is a goblin chief over here yes there is this guy seems to be in remarkably heavy armor for a goblin and quite large as well in fact it's the only goblin you've seen here that doesn't look completely emaciated there's actually like still some serious muscle on this goblin Ooh, our chief here be careful speaking of which uh it's that turn you are gonna hear it bark orders in a goblin language you don't know the goblin language you are not an, an expert of it and then it's gonna maneuver its butt down here it has a shield and spear and you know what svetlana you're just about in range now again there's a whole bunch of of stuff in the way, so you're gonna have plus two AC on this. But it's going to sling a spear one hand, they're just ye yeeting it straight down, trying to nail Svetlana in the face. Face? Yeah, exactly. It wants to nail you in your face for some reason. Maybe because you're killing people brutally. Probably. That's a 10. It's rubbish. And dogs. They missed my face. But they are maneuvering down here. Sarian. Okay. I move here. Can I punch this? Well, not punch, but you know what I mean. You can attack that goblin. That is an option. You can you can try and smack him in the face with your greatsword. Okay. Are you hit? And your minimum damage is high enough to kill this goblin. Perfect. Beautiful. So B. there's no way the guy doesn't die. There's another corpse in this like barricade that they're using for their own defense. Okay, so the silly goblin hurler. Is there any way to destroy that thing instead of jumping? or whatever you could certainly try and destroy it so there's two ways to destroy stuff you can try and do just pure hit point damage which would involve attacks generally barricades like this are designed to be incredibly resilient to that kind of thing or you could try and use a break check which is like you make one strength check and either you manage to like tear it apart or push it out the way or you don't and you get no benefit whatsoever and so that's kind of the risk reward of that fair to to push it yeah. okay i think i think that is uh as someone who's played a fighter a lot in his life i think that's a good choice that now relying on the big strength whenever you can is is really good so I now, have to roll a strength only well that would take your action because you it's you know you're trying to move it apart you've already taken your action to smack this guy right oh okay so you that would have to wait until next turn i would also say that these barricades they're very intentionally designed as barricades they're actually surprising surprisingly good for goblin barricades like they're better than you would expect which engineers with bad materials right like they're like they're like 15 year old potheads they can be sometimes but this is kind of potentially beyond even that 
right? Like, not necessarily much more beyond that, but it's, these seem like, uh, in fact, Elijah, you would know, like, they, they seem like remarkably well-constructed, like, intentionally constructed as well. Maybe if I noticed this, I would suggest that we, uh, we just take the long route around and use the barricade kind of against them, if that makes sense. We have two people who want to stand in front, so, like, one person can sort of try to move this while the other person guards the door, or we can keep marching down this hallway. Ash and I are both not as frail as you might expect from, like, an archer and a wizard, so it's kind of, a, it's okay to expose us to a little bit of, like, combat as long as it's not, like... Yeah, certainly. Bomb, That's an option. Et cetera, so... So I think like from a tactical standpoint, we can choose to waste time on this or we can march down the hallway. Both are viable as long as a decision is made and we do one of yeah. them, not both. In the meantime, however, the Silly Goblin Hurler is going to take its turn and maneuver. Oh, uh, wait. Oh, oh, what am I waiting for? It's, it's a bonus action, right? Yes. Can I use it or do I need uh, something? Oh, I can't select your token. Uh, I believe that, I mean, you, you smacked a guy for your primary action. I believe as long as you have spell casting, and uh, you do, you can just dunk a shield of faith on someone. Okay. Well, now, it, it is concentration, which means if you get smacked, you might drop the spell. Okay. It's okay if I if I ask to Slevana who might say CC has, because I know I can use that on myself and other people, I think. Yeah, you can use it on yourself or other people, and it's okay to know other players' ACs. Yeah. Okay. I think Svetlana's 18, yours is 17, Ash is 14 normally, and Elijah is kind of high, but I can't remember off the top of my head. 16. 16. Much oh, higher shit. than you'd think for a wizard. And I have. Yeah. I so, have as Levana has more than me, I thought I was in. Yeah, by one. You're both really. You both wear mm. real armor, basically, is the difference. You both wear, like, good armor. Strong. Okay. But, you know, not physically strong, just more like. <laughs> I can take a punch. I thought I thought she had less, so I wanted to use that in case, you know, because... Uh, she's using a shield. That's her advice. She's got a shield. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can use it on yourself or her. Both would be good. Don't worry about it too okay, much. Okay, I'm scared of, of this mm, big goblin, so I'm going to use it on myself, okay? Good call. Completely reasonable. Svetlana has the option to attack that guy from 60 feet away, and you don't. So mm -hmm. I think good, putting it on you is a good idea. Excellent choice. Okay, so that ends your turn. Cast a spell? Yeah, bonus. I use this. Oh, so um, you click on like to the left of the spell. Like if you hover it, there like you'll see like a dice icon, and if you click that, it'll roll the spell out so that everyone can read it. Yeah, and it also remove uh, spell usage from your thing. Is this? There you go. Yep. yep. Okay. Nailed it. Okay, plus two bonus AC to the duration, and the duration is listed on there as ten minutes, which is going to be easily longer than this combat. So, Goblin Hala gonna move up here hop the barricade head down here and it's gonna take one more step to here and then who's got a better shot on um, it's gonna sling at Svetlana so it's gonna throw this rock at Svetlana with no disadvantage oh. it's a five that sucks still suck <laughs> and it is the wild dog's turn small rock to a small <laughs> The wild dog is it's gonna it's gonna charge the barricade. It's basically gonna bound and try and leap in into like trashing so I'm gonna move this corpse because there's gonna be an issue. So it's gonna bound moving. Yeah, the dead are moving, it's terrifying. Uh, it's gonna bound and try and you know what? I'm gonna go for Sarian. It's eleven. It's nothing. Okay. Elijah, you're up. I'm going to move here real quick. I can't really see much. I'm gonna move to like here. Ooh, I can see Shoot. so much more now. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. This is just this is just a real clusterfuck is the issue, right? I think I'm gonna go yeah, I'm gonna attack this. Yeah, the let's goblin, do that. right? Yeah, yeah, the goblin hurler. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I missed. Pretty confident. So it goes. <laughs> Svetlana, you're up. It's okay, I was on a roll. Alright, I think I will also go for that. Ah, right. You know, I can see the dog on top of the trap now. Couldn't oh yes. Oh. It's for anyone who can't see, there is a there is a dog just here. Right. It, it's mean. It, it's kinda hard to make these pop when they're so small relative to the thing. I prefer no one see the dog, okay? Okay. I'm okay. We know, we know. We know. I'm much more interested in attacking the thing which is more capable of doing a lot of damage. Is it the mischievous goblin chief or the goblin hunter with a spear? Goblin hunter with a spear? Oh, uh, I killed the spear guy at the beginning. Ah, oh, right. Where, the spear guy's gone. The spear guy was killed. So we got the hurler no. with rocks, and we got the like the serious real guy with actual armor here. Um. Well, we'll get rid of the little guy. First, the um, silly goblin hurler. Oh yeah, exactly. He's very silly. I'm gonna um, sacred flame spell book. Sacred flame. Excellent. 
He, he saves. Oh. <laughs> I do respect, like, as, as Frag Jammer mentions, I respect the fact you're going for the action economy. This is efficiency. It's that Fire Emblem training. Boss is scary. You want to unload everything on it, but the answer is kill the hurler first. It, it does. It won't. It won't take us as long. And it's. It's. You know what I mean. It's almost as scary because yeah. it has the equal number of turns. Wait. So I didn't do any damage to him. It made it save. When it makes it save, you do no damage with sacred flame. Right. Now that makes sense. Uh, there's nothing else I can really do here. I'm gonna continue guarding this area so that dog doesn't come past us. Okay. See? Excellent. Ash, you're up. Let me move in, because I can actually not see the goblin sheep from this position. You guys are being so efficient, by the way. Can I move here? That is an available square to move on, yes. This is a comfy place to sit at. All right, I'm going to aim at this silly goblin hurler. Eat shit. Ha! <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you, 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 you hit the guy. You do four damage. He's still alive, though, but he's messed up. He, he has been brutalized. All right, you turn over? Uh, I'm done, yes. This was good enough. Okay, excellent. Got this, guys. So, mischievous goblin chief knows when things aren't going his way over here. <laughs> and leaves the area. Sarah, and you're up. Okay, I intimidate the doggy. Okay, roll intimidation. Ooh. That's a really good roll. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say, like, it, there are still goblins around, so it's still, like, incentivized to engage you. But, key thing here, even though there are still goblins around, it's not going to attack next turn. And if you can intimidate it again or clear the goblins, it's probably going to run away. Okay. Um, can I try to move here? You'll be moving through a hostile square, so not really. But the dog is intimidated by me. He's going to let me go. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Trying to start some shit, huh? <laughs> you might have to beat that dog. <laughs> no. Like, dog isn't attacking you. That doesn't mean it won't attack if you approach it. But can I try it anyway? You might completely invalidate what you just achieved with the intimidation, but I'll let you do it, and you'll have to take an acrobatics roll to get over it. Okay, so I... And this, this acrobatics is going to be with disadvantage because you're trying not to piss off the dog. This is going to be horrible. Yes. yes. An 11 is not enough under the circumstances. So I'm going to give you a choice of outcome here. One, you don't make any movement. You sat right there. Nothing happens. Two, uh, you make it across, but the dog is pissed off and will get an opportunity attack. I'm okay with opportunity attack. Okay. So I can move, right? Yep. So you're going to move up to here. Yes. And now, Skywalkers. Okay. because of pack tactics and one of its allies is in five feet of a creature, it is going to get advantage on this attack. Okay. So this is an 18. 19, I think. You, you you just evade this due to your shield of faith. Yay! Untouchable. Excellent. <laughs> Silly Goblin Hurler is going to try to run away. Opportunity attack. Yes. Um. Normal or with advantage? No advantage. You don't have anything that gives you advantage. So that is a miss and it is going to run its ass raggedy in much the same way. It's going to take the dash action once it gets out here. Even when he runs, he looks silly. He, he does look very silly. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do, I think, unless you guys want to pursue... Oh, no, there's still the dog to handle. So the dog is missing its next action. Elijah. <sighs> uh, <laughs> I will walk maybe over here. I'm just going to move a little bit, and I'll, I'll take, like, I don't know, I'll take the dodge action. Okay, Svetlana. Can I try and shoo the dog out of the tunnel door? You know, like, if it's a bit intimidated, it's between two enemies, it might run outside. Um, and then I could come behind Eli. So you're, you're just... Can have a good. look. Okay. Are you going to roll something to try and encourage it to do that, or...? Yeah, I'll do an animal handling. Okay. Roll some animal handling. To be like, get the fuck out of here. Damn dog. 22. Fantastic. Good. Okay. Fantastic. Good. <laughs> good. 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 No. Good. Good. No, it's fine. Good. <laughs> Ash, you're up. Please put a bolt through that dog's head. <laughs> no. Okay. I'll give you inspiration if you kill the dog. No. <laughs> I will. I will run and I will take the the arrow with my mouth if you try to. <laughs> to I will protect uh, that doggy forever. Anyway, Ash, what are you what are you choosing to do? I'll run. Okay, so you guys are all running up there. The goblin's gonna do some stuff off screen. Sarian, you're up. You can try and intimidate the dog again. It might it might already be able to, able to it might be running out. You don't know what it's gonna do next time. I can't see the dog. I don't know where the dog is. It's, it's right here. Or is it Why? Ah, uh, okay, because I see everything now black and white. Right, because dark vision, because it's dark there. Yeah. You don't have no light. Okay, I'm going to try to intimidate the doggy. Okay, roll intimidate. <laughs> 
session. <laughs> Ascon, that is so on point. Session one, racism. Session two, animal cruelty. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Yep. We're, we're gonna we're gonna resolve this as the wild dog runs away unless Sarian makes an opportunity attack. Look at I'm assuming you're not making opportunity attack. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna end combat here. Okay. Okay, so you guys, like, you've just you just finished off this engagement. We've we've come out of this encounter. We can move through. You can move through here, or you can try circumnavigating potentially. But that would run you into the undead creatures that we ran into previously. It is up to you how you want to progress. All right, I'm gonna follow. Ash. It's a struggle here. Uh, so this seems to be the detritus of the goblins living here. It is kind of a mess. In fact, as you move through here, you notice a couple things. Number one, these bags over here contain grain, like as in foodstuffs. Hey, Sarian, what about yes. your dog? Hi, the dog. You think he's alright? I don't know. I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna, I'm gonna be blunt with you guys just just in the in the idea of like a little bit of expediency because we could hang around for the next six hours doing this. I'm not gonna attack the dog outside. Okay. Like, thank you. The dog, the dog must be fine. Yeah, not I hungry. think I had a divine intervention just now. D yeah, divine. I I. Moon goddess is talking to me. It's fine. I am your god, and I am telling you the dog's gonna be okay out there. Whether or not it's friends with you later, that's that's a separate issue. What's uh what's loaded up in this little wagon? There are a number of shields here. It seems that they the goblins have been at this for a while and have acquired a small array of like things and stuff. Most of it they've used for their own equipment, but. There are a number of shields here if someone wants to take an extra shield. Does anyone, does it, is there equipment anyone wants like the most basic version of that they don't have? Because this would be a great time to pick something like that for free. I got a shield. Well, yeah, like if you want, if you want a shield we could or, or club, just shields <laughs> based on that suggestion. Gosh, could I cast light on a shield and then throw it like a frisbee into the dark? <laughs> you could. That oh That is an option. You wield a shield, don't you? I, I'm going to do that. Do, do I wield very... I oh, never mind. Okay, so you're picking up yes, an additional yes. shield. You're dual wielding shields. Yeah. Okay. You're dual wielding shields. You can cast it on your own shield if you want. Uh, even if you just want a light source around you. I mean, she also got a rock available. Like, there is one rock with light cast on it. There's an arrow with light on it right now over there. You can cast it on a shield. I was. Throw the shield. Yeah, cast it on a shield that I was going to throw if you away. Create more light Go sources. for it. Love it. All right. Okay, fantastic. Where are you throwing? Where are you throwing? Where are you throwing it? Throw it up in this direction into the darkness. Uh, which way? There's there's two there's two ways it can go. It's attacking the uh, darkness. The left or right? Okay, left. Okay, fantastic. You throw you throw the shield down here. Let me get those numbers right. There is now light down there. Make sure you're wiggled. Okay. So the angles of the walls don't let you see anything. But you kind of roll the shield down the the hallway. Some. Roll me a perception check, actually. Okay, with 14, you've, like, when that happens, you definitely heard some movement afterwards, just afterwards, like footsteps. I'm thinking that that um, goblin captain might have gone up that way then, but I'm not sure about the path behind us. Might not be the goblin captain. Oh, yeah, there was them zombies around. Um, I have a question. Is this where I'm standing? Is that what I think it is? It, it does appear to be some kind of biological waste. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, let me... Just stand behind you. I have a feeling we have uh, problems approaching us again. Might wanna just scoot over there, get ready, you know? Uh, thinking that we're about to have problems too. This is a good point. We, we should just, I, I can't see in there. Can you see something in there? It's a little, I don't need two ways to go. I wanna Are see you... in those tunnels. Only way you're seeing those is if you get out and stick your face in them. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. One of you go. Hey, I go bad, okay. All right, I'm going to do my keep. So Shield of Faith is still going to be up for at least another few minutes. But if you delay it too long, Shield of Faith will go down. Okay. Because it's only 10 minutes. Let's slip up quite away. I don't see anything. Mm -hmm. Can I go first? Do I see anything? I'm going to have to use that ruler, otherwise I can't actually move my thing up. I'm definitely not going to stop the half orc lady. You go first. Okay. It looks, you want looks pretty delay? clear from what you can tell. The zombies are definitely on the right side. I don't know if they heard us off. It was the goblins. Right running towards us or running further away. We might want to check out the left side first. Fair. Okay. That appears sensible. I don't think we're worried about them coming this way, right? Um, okay, everyone, please roll initiative. <laughs> we're not worried at all. Uh, I say, okay, now roll initiative. Oh, baby. Ooh. 
but that actually doesn't help. First time that they have more hunting. Sarah, and you you hear the noises of goblins, and like the moment you spot them, they're ready for you. But like you you, you were aware of this, right? Like you were like, yeah, I'm on edge. I think some shit's gonna go down. You were ready to handle some stuff. So you call out, and you're like, goblins, and then shit happens. Ash, you're up. Okay. Uh, let me scoot over here first. Can I say I can... something? Yeah, sure. Like, I recommend you to be behind me, that's all. Okay, yeah, yeah, I wanna not <laughs> use my full movement immediately, I wanna see something first. I can do that, okay. right? I can move cl- slowly and then see and then use the rest of my movement. Yeah, so you can mo- use all your movement in the process of, of, like, whatever steps you wanna move in. Just go here, I don't see anything, so I'll go here, I don't see anything, uh, I'll move over yeah, I guess. I still don't see anything. I don't want to pass you. I can ready up an attack, right? You can ready up an attack to attack like the first thing you see, or you can give it like some conditional statements. The first goblin-like creature that steps into my vision. Wonderful. Elijah, you're up. There's some shit down this hallway. You can't see much, but you can hear it. There's movement, right? There's footsteps. There's a, there's a sound of like that preparatory stomping. I think based on what Elijah, not Elijah, based on what Ash just did, play around that so yeah so i can't see shit down getting in well yeah it's like i know i could see i'm pretty sure i could see something if i moved southwest of nix sarian oh i see one oh god but can't i don't really want to do that too late one there he is one i remember you can use q to like lean as well yeah i forgot i guess i wouldn't have hit that guy what do you think move in front of you or not in front of me no, in front of... I'm more worried about Ash. Ah, oh, okay. I think that's fine. I can still move past you next time. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll move. I'm going to say that there is two goblins on my left. At least two. I don't know if there is more. I measured it. It said 30. Okay, and I can see this guy on the lean. So I'm good here, actually. can't see which one it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can barely see one, and I can't but I make can out which one But I can see him, which means I'm allowed to attack him. That's the one you're you talking about. I can't tell exactly which which goblin I can see, but I can see one right here. I okay, yes. That's an angry goblin scrapper. Yeah, I want to attack him. Okay, so you lean and you fireball, because this involves a certain amount of leaning from your position, you're trying to maintain any guarded position, is going to get partial cover. I'm okay with that. I figured you might be. 11 misses. I don't think it mattered. Nice. Okay, naive. That's my turn. I figured as much. Oh, <laughs> thing yet. Yeah, I mean, you're level two, right? Okay, Ash. That's me. The naive goblin poker is like charging down this lane to try and stick the stick their ore in, as it were. Very naive. Very naive. Two, two, That's the first one to charge. It's a terrible decision. We regret that decision immediately. On the bones, what happens to him? Oh. 14. Oh, it's hit. It's a hit. He doesn't have a shield. It's a hit. It's a hit. Roll damage. <laughs> that cop. Seven damage. Let's go. Oh, you butchers him. The mistake. You only does that. He, 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 he goes to sprint down here, just about to lay into Sarian with that spear. And you just thwonk him like in the jaw, twisting him down, right? <laughs> slicing his throat out. And he realizes like he's watching his own blood seep out and he's like confused, trying to like push the blood back in as he falls to the floor and dies. That's what you get for coming in. Svetlana, you're up. Of all people. What's up? All right. In the moment that the goblin walks uh, through here, I still have the chance to to have an reaction attack. Were you? Uh, I don't think you readied an action because you got alerted. Your opportunity attack happens when they leave your threatened area. Ah, okay. So they can transition through it. Like so, he could have gone here, here, and then here and would not have triggered an opportunity attack. But if he'd gone back here, would have triggered an opportunity attack from Ash because this is Ash's threatened area. And then if they'd gone here- And me, and me. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, and you, sorry. No, that's true. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Elijah, yeah, Elijah also gets it. I have to try and get as much value out of this as I can. (laughs) And then if, but they still wouldn't have triggered it from you until they moved to here, because then they would have left your threatened area. Svetlana, you're up. What are you doing? All right, I'm going to get in front of everybody. So I think that's a solid decision. I'm going to move 25 feet, but I can move 30 feet over here. But I'm going to move. You absolutely can. Feet. I can move the corpse for you if you need. Wait, you don't want to stand in a puddle of blood? So I'm going to come over here so I can see what's going off. Okay, excellent. As you can see, it is a diabolical mess of goblins in close range. Oh 
All right, in that case, I am going to fire some secret flame at the silly goblin hunter. I could good, get wonderful. Get closer and hit him with a mace. Oh, I think this is good. Um, we, we, we have a little choke point. This is good. Okay, in that case... Unless they... I mean, like, I don't know. They, they haven't proven to be that smart yet. Lag is being nice. Sacred flame. Okay, sacred flame. Deck save. He's gonna make it. He doesn't make it. Roll damage. You burn this this goblin entity oh. to death. Ah, oh, that was the hard one, right? That was the one you damaged earlier. Silly mm. one. Yeah. Sarian, you're up. I move here. Oh, this is the big one, right? And I hit the angry. Angry Goblin Scrapper, absolutely, you can do that. Mm -hmm. So with a 12. Oi, sorry. You miss. I miss? Yeah, the Scrapper has a shield. Sadly, it's not modeled on the actual token, but they do have a shield on the token that they should be using. I'm going to use, is the Seal of Faith still working? Yes, it would still be up. It hasn't been 10 minutes yet. Can I also use com Compel Duel to one of the Goblins that are on the top? like? Close. You can try, certainly. Okay. I don't know if it's gonna be successful, but you know, roll your dice. Okay, so a DC 12 wisdom save, you attempt to compel a duel. It's 13. Goblin. It saves. Wow. It's brave, you can't compel its duel. No. It's not brave enough for a duel. It's so brave. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's so brave that it's like, nah, I'll, I'm not gonna, I don't believe. Uh, I'm, you know what? It's it's brave enough to be self-assured in its masculinity that it doesn't need to, you know, deal with your your taunting, your prompting. It's like no I'm iron fist of goblins, which feels like something you shouldn't be able to say. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely fucking love the name, like, because uh, this is an option, right? This is an optional thing. You don't have to do this, but I have them generated with the extra descriptive names because I think it's so much more entertaining than like Goblin Scrapper 1, Goblin Scrapper 2. It's very funny. Oh yeah, yeah, I love this. It's good. They all get a little bit of uh, personality with that. Okay, so Saren, is that your entire turn? Yeah, I think I can't Okay. Do anything. Technically you could move away, but that would just soak opportunity attacks and be unfortunate, so mm -hmm. a terrible, terrible decision. Okay, so the Goblin Chief is going to attempt to shank you. Oh, actually, the Goblin Chief is going to do something far crueler. Oh boy. Uh, it's going to use an item interaction, and it is going to attempt to hurl acid at Svetlana. <gasps> imagine not just knowing acid flask. I imagine, imagine. But it is going to pull a vial of acid from within its uh, from within its armor, and then attempt to like throw it into Svetlana's face because it, it thinks that Svetlana is like the the key component here, right? And wants to handle that. Yeah, like it's a very armored like. Sarian very strong. Svetlana so far demonstrated very, very good competence. This, this, this Sarian got, she's kind of afraid of dogs. It's kind of weird. Okay, so this is a ranged attack. It doesn't get penalty because of the situation it's in. It doesn't get any advantage though. That's a nine. That, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> uh, so the acid slams into the wall uh, just behind you and starts melting the rock. This is some vicious, nasty acid that it, it slung at you. It's also going to move around here, not provoking an attack because it doesn't need to. And then there's going to be perplexed goblin scrapper who is going to move here and make an attack on Svetlana. This is this is against you, Svetlana. It's a 12, it doesn't matter because he sucks. Brave goblin scrapper uh, is going to move down here and also try and tear into Svetlana and cut you up. It's an eight, okay. Eventually, one of them is going to roll something useful. Eventually, it might be weeks from now, but eventually, uh, this guy's going to move here to get a line straight through here. There isn't any uh, flanking on this, but he's going to act like there is as he tries to tear into Sarian, doing nothing. Ash, you're up. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start off with action search, and with that, I can attack twice. Correct? Yes. You basically you get to take your action twice. I think usually the way it works is you take your action, then you use the action surge as your bonus action, which gives you your action back. Yeah. I'm going to attack the Brave Goblin Scrapper. Okay, Brave Goblin Scrapper, that is a hit. Four damage. So your arrow like guts him, but it's a through and through. The arrow's just gone straight through, which means he's still up in combat capable. He's, he's bleeding out. You don't think he's gonna survive, even if he wins this fight? It's probably not going to survive, but he's not currently dead. All right, now you have your second action with which you can act with 
by using axe and such. Action search, and then I'm going to attack the perplexed goblin scrapper next. All right, perplexed. Per perplexed goblin scrapper that's uh, a 15 okay you get you hit that but only because you have you almost misses it's kind of it's a difficult shot round like trying to get through all these clustered people right oh yeah yeah and it is that should be good. six damage you instantly kill perplexed goblin scrapper it's fine with this result um, like you you pin it in the chest and it just bleeds out from this weeping wound in its chest falling in the acid and having its face melting off is there anything sensible i can do that is not moving here. Not really. Not really. I, I think you're just. I think you're just shooting these people down right now. Yeah. I'll, then I'll just stand here. Wait. I think this is good. Okay. In that case, Elisha, you're. All right. I'm going to cast magic missile. Oh. And uh, we are going to attack the scrapper with one of the missiles and the chief with the other two. Okay. I think that should do what I wanted to do. So you're gonna hit with one d4 on one of them. And then, sorry, 1d4 plus 1 on one of them, and then 1d4 plus 1 twice on the cheek, yes. correct? Yeah, that, yeah. that is Scrapper probably functional. For like a low amount of damage earlier, right? Yeah, so that is the Scrapper. Uh, you you kill the Scrapper. Oh, you, you you got max roll and high roll. That's fantastic. Yeah, that, was, that worked out so good. Oh. That is, like, of the spread of damage that you could have had, that was like the ideal spread of yeah. damage that got you everything. Oh, my wizardry. Oh, was... Yeah, everyone be very very in awe high five yeah. ideal damage it is non-negotiable <laughs> so the magic missile doesn't even need a hit roll as as it notes it's a force spell so it's just magically arcanely guided and one bolt like just reflexively pegs this this brave golden scrapper entering through the wound he already had and then just tearing up through his uh, through his organs not having to worry about armor and such cool. the other mischievous the captain is struck twice but between the armor and just the raw durability of this of this chief, he isn't even bloodied. Injured, nice. but not bloodied. Svetlana, you're up. All right, the chief is already somewhat injured. I do not want him getting at the um, crew behind me. Can he get around me? He could theoretically- It would be very dangerous to try. <laughs> it would be dangerous, but he could move to here without taking an opportunity attack from Svetlana. He would absolutely take an opportunity attack from Sarian. Though do remember, he has shown that he has some throwing weapons. In that case, I, I'm gonna stay here to make sure that he's gonna at least get an opportunity attack from somebody. He has run away from a battle before, so I'm assuming he's not gonna do something that stupid. So if you wanted to force two opportunity attacks before he got into melee, you'd actually move here, because then to move out of threatened range and when he moves here he'd get attacked by both of you because your threatened range would be this ah right so if i move there then we just move that corpse out of the way for you right precisely i'm wondering if sacred flame or mace sacred flames better here because of the armor your intuit your intuition would suggest so yeah all right let's sacred flame him i guess like we'd have to if we had like a ranger here or something who was like i hate <laughs> And like maybe oh. we would know like more about this guy, but he rolls a natural twenty on his dexterity saving throw, completely ignoring the the sacred flame. The sacred flame strikes the armor, you know, as you would expect it to, and then just washes off like nothing. It's actually like really disconcerting. I've like this is not <laughs> <laughs> this is not how the spell is meant to work. In fact, this is genuinely kind of bizarre. Like there seems to be potentially some other forces in play. Yeah. Sarian, you're up. So the only guy that's not starving as well. He does seem to have eaten better. We do know now from a metagame perspective, because you have forced him to do this, that his deck save is just a plus one. So attacking it this way isn't necessarily bad unless the radiant damage is bad. Ah. Though I will say it's very unusual for something to have defense against radiant unless they're like an angel or some shit. I'm going to attack Excellent. the angry goblin. Angry Goblin Scrapper, that's a hit. Okay. Seven damage, you casually slice the Angry Goblin Scrapper in two. Perfect. Um, that is all I can do, I think, because I have... You could move to this square if you wanted to, but it's not really a huge advantage either way. Advantage, because... No, not on, like, flanking doesn't work like that. Oh, okay. So, that's... in some systems there is flanking, some GMs have flanking rules. In 5e, flanking is not a rule by default. And we're running baseline just to keep things mostly straightforward. Please don't include flanking. I've been, yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's not. You feel like it'd be good for you. It's bad for you. It's so bad. Yeah. There's so many more enemies than there are good guys. It's so bad. And, and, they all and, get flanking all the time and you never get it. It's horrible. Oh. 
And then they get flanking when they've got sneaky boys and like backstab and then they have constant backstab and they're just doing 8d6 around every round and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Sounds rough. And then they get like triple crits and you're you just one shot constantly. Anyway, assuming that's your entire action, Sarian, it is a mischievous golden chief. And that wizard just, just magic missile his ass. And he's in a bad position and he really doesn't want to take another magic missile. He thinks he's got the armor and, and the capability to shrug off sacred flame and, and, and getting smacked in the face. But this wizard, it's not about that. So he's going to sling a vial of acid at your boy, Mr. Wizard Boy to try and make sure that he doesn't get another nasty magic missile to the face. Bring, bring it on. That's a 14. Uh, That's against my armor? Yeah, it's against your armor. That's a miss. It's a miss. God damn. <laughs> so if I'm not mistaken, you do have like some kind of magically engaged AC bonus right now? Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. That's, there's no magically engaged AC bonus. That's... Not at the moment. Okay. But in the future, there might be. Well, uh, okay. Mage armor. Yeah, there is mage armor. Sorry. Okay. So there's mage armor. Like this thing's coming in, the reflective abjuring forces just smack it out the air. Like you kind of intuitive, like, oh, that's an incoming zack. Thwack. Almost, almost as though you would use it. Yeah, this guy's walking around with acid on him. Like, Yeah, it, <laughs> it's mage armor and a shield, basically, stacked on top of each other is why he's tanky. And then, or is why he's got 16 AC. And then yeah. and it's like, the, this is very good. Right now, the first seven points of damage all come off the arcane ward. I think he might die soon, if I'm honest. That's fair. The, the mischievous goblin that is like i don't oh i was i was like look i get it man i'm sure like, they're strong yeah. no no i mean <laughs> i'm not just like i'm gonna kill your fucking character no i just mean the mischievous goblin is not in a good position right now there's a lot of people attacking him and if he runs over here it will hurt a lot ash it's it's your turn all right aim and shoot aim and shoot okay roll it that's what it's uh -huh. You do a absolutely scathing hit. You tag him in like the back of his shoulder blade as he's trying to like maneuver away from you. And like you've clearly hit something important. Blood is now just weeping and streaming from his body. Mm, Assuming that's your entire turn, Ash. Take one step here. Okay, Elijah, you're up. Do you guys think he's a flight risk? Mm, I think he dies when he tries to run away. Okay. I was just checking, you know, cause like I have solutions to that problem. That's why I was- Yeah, you can slow him down, right? Uh, I was thinking more about, I, look, if I don't have to cast a spell to, to handle with this, I, to do bother with this, I won't. Um, or like a, a real spell slot. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I'll just magic missile him again. Let's do some guaranteed damage. Okay. Nice. 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 So you, you know, this, this goblin has a couple wounds on him now and you're like, okay, I see this. I know how to use this magic missile. And you basically bury the magic missile missiles like through the wounds and just shred his insides, just annihilating his internal organs. And you see like almost a pulsating pustules underneath his skin as this is happening. And his body is just shredded and he, he falls to the ground dead. Oh, I thought you were new to this magic thing. It's impressive. I wouldn't say I'm combat ends. I would say I'm I'm a born again uh, wizard, if you will. Mm. You have slaughtered mercilessly right. many goblins. All right, I want to check out his body. There should be something on him. There is a silence that pervades the area now. Like before, there was like an underlying sense of movement and action, but now it's nothing but silence. Uh, so the goblins have, you know, goblin trash on them. These these are not interesting enemies in terms of potential loot. However, the goblin chief, uh, if you would like to check the goblin chief's inventory, uh, they do appear to have some stuff on them. You can double click on them. They are now a loot pile. Oh, nice. Yeah. For chat's benefit, uh, the loot pile is of three acid vials, one chain mail, one shield and one spear. I don't need any of that stuff. Really? The spear might be the most useful, but I have Rage combat, I have some hand axes. I'm not sure if I... And we can sell all of this. Yeah, we can sell can, all of this. Or just... Like, yeah. Add, just as an F... Take oh, go ahead. acid. Yeah, acid might be the most useful thing here, actually. Yeah. Nice. It's a nice change up on the type of damage you can do. And um, yeah, I'm surprised no one benefits from the chainmail. Uh, I have a chainmail, Ray. I think the chainmail is too heavy for me. I need some dexterity armor, right? And chain I have chainmail on. Probably okay, we already have. Well then, right. you know, we get to sell it, like you said. Chainmail's good. In that case, how do I take his items? Uh, are, are, who's looting what, is is the question. I'll take his acid. Okay. Take a spear. Some, someone's taking the acid. How many acids does he have? 
He's got three assets. <laughs> okay, so someone else was taking the spear, correct? Yeah, I'll take the spear. Drag that spear over to your inventory. You've now got it. Take the rest. And we got. Is anyone taking the chainmail? I, uh, and I mean, if no one's taking it, I'll take the it. Door. It's, it's worth dollars. I'll take it. Uh, so, Elisha, I'm going to put the chainmail on you then. I'm hearing what? I have medium armor proficiency and I can wear the chain. Uh, uh, I mean. I mean, it's on your token. Uh, the rules say if it's on your token, you, you have proficiency in it, right? Like that's how that's how NPCs work. Surely it works for PCs as well. Yeah. But okay, you've looted this guy. Fantastic. Let's investigate the purple light carefully. Ah, oh, he's already in there. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm getting whatever this this radiation is. Mmm, tasty, tasty radiation. Would you like to roll some knowledge, Arcana? Yes, I would. I mean, it's just Arcana. It's not knowledge Arcana. It's just it's just Arcana. But roll it anyway. Well, it's twenty one. Uh, you are you are not like like super objectively familiar with this, right? Like BT Warpstone, isn't it? LGBT Warpstone. Yeah, exactly. So you are not like super familiar with this as a natural phenomena, but you can kind of ascertain a couple things by where it grows and what it's doing. And it's kind of familiar to like a couple things that you've seen or read about before. So you might not, might not have ex hands on experience with this, but you've got like some book knowledge. You think that the crystal growing out of this wall here that's glowing is a type of crystal that is resonant with magical energies. So you believe that it's glowing because you are in an area that has magical energy. You don't know what that magical energy is. Potentially, you might be able to harvest it as a material, but it is notable that harvesting it as a material is generally meant to be incredibly difficult to do without fracturing it in such a way that would render it inert. Okay. So we'd have to really know what we were doing to mine this. I might Potentially. See that giant green glowing thing at the end of the hall. I know, I see it. I was I want to investigate it. I see it too. After we are done with our purple glowy crystals, um, yeah. So maybe we should just note that this is here. Maybe we can like sell the knowledge of this location to someone. You think you could make an attempt of it, but you like that wouldn't be any guarantee. I'll, I'll give it a shot. I mean, I'm not going to... It's not like I want to mine the place dry. I'll give it a shot. See if I have any okay. fun ideas that work. So I'm, I'm going to let you kind of like... If you could think of a way that you would like acquire this uh, to try and give yourself an advantage in some way. I, I don't know what that would be. I'm just... I'm letting you give him a chance to be creative. Mm -hmm. You can work something out. Otherwise, you can just roll a second Arcana skill check and hope for the best. Yeah, I mean, all I've got is, like, I could give myself a mage hand if I thought that, like, a third hand was helpful in a situation like this, which could be the case, like, when you're trying to apply pressure in multiple places to avoid a fracture, like... Right, and that's but, potentially true. I don't know, you know, eh, that's kind of flimsy. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, like, you know, maybe you have to give me a little bit more than that. Uh, you do have Mason's tools, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, Which, that's that's pretty good. Surely got tools lying around, so, like, that would be the idea. It would be like, let's acquire some tools, let's let's go ahead and get a third hand, because a third hand attached to the same brain is better than hands three and four not. I'm actually going to say, like, I haven't just looked at your character sheets, I think Mason's tools would provide you, like, you know, you've dealt with rocks before, you've dealt with stone and shaping it and yeah. crystals. Oh, like, because I think mining is, like, a different thing. Right, so but it's it's a, an associated skills. I'm taking it. So trust me, I was I wasn't gonna ask for it. I'm gonna say you get advantage on this as an Arcana check because you have proficiency in the Mason's tools, uh, and this is you know as per many DM things, this is a one-off thing, right? I don't know if I'll do it in the future, but you have it now. Oh, I forgot to roll with advantage, but I'll just roll again. Okay. Okay, so with a 19, you carefully work your way through this crystal element. And, you know, you're being very, very kind of cautious and mindful. By a little bit of pressure, you put a little a splint in it, a splitting stone, you carve a tiny little bit more, and you're trying to basically create a very controlled fracture. Kind of like when you work with glass or something, or when you split marble, right? That's something you've, you've definitely done before. And then you know that if you do it just right, it'll all crack off at once. And you get that far and it's working well. And then you hear that that crack you're expecting, and it's it's like 
it's good it's good like nice clean crack and the first crack happens and that's good and then a second crack happens and that's bad that you shouldn't have a second crack in these situations right and then there's a third and a fourth and a sixth and every like you you crack a fragment off it a small fragment an idealized fragment but in doing so the power winks out of every other fragment here so you have oh, man. a small fragment that does seem to have some power to it but you don't think you'll be able to collect any more or sell this as a mining area yeah at this juncture so i'm gonna add a thing to your sheet real quick an item i mean that might be worth worth a lot oh might yeah. or maybe be worth investigating something. Yeah. Of more about the source of this magic. I'm gonna keep it on me and try to learn more about it. And when we get to camp, I'll, I might have some questions for Solana. Excellent. Also, we are approaching up on the hour timeline that was initially suggested. So maybe we want to stop here. Yeah. Yeah. Five hours is a long time. I'm okay bowing out and starting with questions about the other room. I feel like that's like, yeah. I haven't really thought about the other room. We just were like, look at that green thing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think this this is where we're going to be ending session today. Uh, how how is everyone feeling about session? I know we've run we've run hard this session. Like last time we went like three and a half, and this time we went five. The plan was for like four, but you know, shit happened. Were you guys having fun during it? Yeah. Yes. I'm stressed, but this is this is very enjoyable. <laughs> you're you're stressed. Am I st in, in what way? Oh yeah. Yes. Oh okay. Right with me. <laughs> okay. Well, that, that makes sense. I'm having a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we we should raid our butts out to somebody. Somebody. Anyone got any recommendations? Oh, oh, this is perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> Jack Jack Strats is playing Baldur's Gate three. Oh, that Ooh. is perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, we're heading out to Jack Strats. He's good people. If you guys want to check out what we're doing when we're doing it, there's going to be stuff on Discord, so you can check it out. I'm going to be posting the maps for this session on there. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to raid you out because. Everyone needs to take a nap. Bye, people. Have a wonderful day. Anyone else want to say bye? Bye. Bye, guys. Bye -bye. Thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging out with us. Have a wonderful day, guys. We're out.